What if Deku joined Team JPDE compilation? Chapters 1 to 8 A Whole New World Daidaku Bakugo shouted as he fired a blast at Deku. Wait Kaken. Hold on Deku said, dodging the blasts. Bring out that 0.2.0 power you damn nerd Bakugo shouted firing off two more blasts. Wait, it won't come out Deku said, narrowly dodging the blasts. Stop. That isn't what you're supposed to do calm down Toshinari shouted. That power should come out when you're in trouble like before Bakugo said. We're trying to keep it from coming out. Young Midoriya, how is it Toshinari asked. It really won't come out. The presence is gone Deku said. You're not scared enough. If I beat you up more, it'll come out suddenly, and then I'll beat you up so completely while you're like that Bakugo said. Hold your horses Toshinari said. If one for all responds to my feelings, then at that time, because I thought. This power is something I won't use for a while. Yeah, I judged that it wasn't power I could use right now. That might be why it's like the quirk has been locked away. If that's the case, then if I formulate an image of unlocking and locking a lock and become able first to use the quirk called back whip Deku muttered. This is boring, damn it. If you can't use it, then there's no point. I'm going back. Hearing you mutter gives me the creeps bake you go said and left Jim Gamma. Why don't we stop here for the day Toshinari said. Oh, okay Deku said. Deku then picked up the notebook containing all the past users of one for all. He started to flip through it until he reached the third user. What could be your quirk Deku muttered. I'm sorry I couldn't find anything on the second and third users Toshinari said. No, it's fine. They were alive over a century ago, and at the start of quirk evolution. It would be quite hard to find anything about them Deku said. Still, as your teacher and master, I wish I could have found more Toshinari said. Well, I think it will be a long time before I unlock either. And if I get more control over one for all then maybe I'll be able to ask them Deku said. I hope it's sooner rather than later. You'll need all the help you can get to fix what I left you with Toshinari said. The two had now exited Jim Gamma. Go and get changed and then get a good night's sleep. We'll try this aging tomorrow Toshinari said. All right Deku said. Deku then began to walk to the change room when all of a sudden he was covered in an orange light. All Might Deku shouted. Toshinari turned around to see what was happening. Young Midoriya. What's happening Toshinari asked. I don't know. Could this be one of their quirks Deku asked. It's possible. Try to calm down and lock the power away Toshinari said. Deku then started to slowly breathe in and out, but the light only intensified. It's not working Deku said. All right. I'll call Azawa Toshinari said. Yes Toshi Azawa answered. We need your help quick, young Midoriya's quirk is on the fritz again Toshinari said. I'm on my way Azawa said, quickly standing up and then rushed out of the dorm room. He's on his way Toshinari said. All might Deku said. Deku was now starting to fade and disappear. Young Midoriya. Remember this, wherever you end up. We will find you Toshinari said. Okay. I'll see you later Deku said. Deku then full disappeared and the orange light fade. Azawa then arrived. Where is Midoriya Azawa asked. Gone. It looked like he was being teleported somewhere Toshinari said. Is it Azawa asked. No. He was covered in an orange light. So, I don't think it's the league Toshinari said. Okay. I'll start a search party. Whilst you tell the students what happened and tell his mother. But don't tell this to Eri yet, not until I'm around Azawa said. Okay Toshinari said. Azawa started to call Nezu, whilst Toshinari went to tell the students. In the night sky a woman with blonde hair could be seen using a telekinetic power to repair part of a street that was destroyed by some kind of impact. 
How many times am I going to have to fix these streets the woman said. Then a glow of orange light appeared in the night sky. Not again the woman complained. She then began to make her way towards the light. The orange light dissipated, and Deku found himself high in the sky. He began to fall down towards the ground. He activated one for all and aimed his arms towards the ground. As the ground approached Deku flicked his fingers reducing his speed. He flipped and landed safely on the ground. Where am I Deku asked. He then jumped onto a roof to get a better view of the area. This looks like somewhere in Europe, but it's night. It should be light out. So this means I'm somewhere close to Japan. Maybe Australia Deku muttered. Deku then pulled out his phone. Ha! Huh. No signal at all. Guess I'll have to do this the old-fashioned way Deku muttered. Deku began to run and jump between the building in hopes of finding a map or a recognizable landmark, but there didn't seem to be any around. Suddenly Deku was covered in a purple light, restricting his movement, and was then dragged through the air. Deku now found himself face to face with a blonde-haired woman. Just what I needed. Another boy falling out of the sky. Though I must thank you for not destroying the streets the worm said. Nani Deku replied. What language was that? It sounds like one of the old languages from Anima, but I can't tell what it is the woman said. Anima. It I saw Han and Izuka. What Ashiga Dokoni Iaru no Ka Oshayat Kyomasan Ka Deku asked. You're fluent in a dead language. Do you speak Valesian? the woman asked. Valesian. But she's speaking English, what is Valesian? Either way I do speak English, so maybe I'll be able to find out where I am Deku thought. Hello Deku said. Ah, so you do speak Valesian? the woman said. But I'm not. I'm speaking English Deku said. What are you talking about? Valesian is the standard language across Remnant. Has been since the Great War the woman said. What are you talking about? Our planet is called Earth. And there is no standard language, and don't you mean the First World War Deku asked. What? Did you hit your head or something the woman asked. I'm so confused, where am I? Who are you? And can you put me down Deku asked. You are in Vale. My name is Glinda Goodwitch. And I won't be putting you down until you tell me why you fell out of the sky Glinda said. I wish I could tell you that myself. My name is Ijuku Midori Adeku said. So you don't know why you were falling out of the sky Glinda asked. Well sort of. I was leaving one of UA's trainings facilities when an orange light started to cover me, and I was transported here. My quirk has acting up as of recently Deku said. UA. Quirk. Where are you from Glinda asked. I'm from Japan Deku said. Japan. Never heard of anywhere called Japan Glinda said. Really. It's a small island nation to the east of the world, it's close by to China Deku said. Are you having me on Glinda asked. Noam Deku replied. Home. You appeared out of the sky but have memories, but they are of places I've never heard of. So, you can't be like him Glinda said. Like who Deku asked. None of your business. I need to make a call stay here Glinda said. Not like I can go anywhere Deku said. A few minutes later Glinda finished the call. Alright. You will be coming with me to meet Ospin, the headmaster of Beacon Academy. Do you have any objections Glinda asked. No. But can you please let me go from your telekinesis quirk Deku said. Oh. Okay, you seem to not be a threat, and by the way it's not a curic, it's not some weird part of me. It's a power that I unlocked through my aura Glinda said, as she let Deku go. No. Where I come from a quirk is a superpower that humans have evolved to have Deku said. We'll discuss this later. Right now, we'll go to Beacon Academy Glinda said. The two remained silent as Glinda lead Deku to a landing pad, and then boarded a ship that took them to Beacon Academy. 
They soon landed and Deku was stunned by the school even though it was dark out. Glinda then led Deku the main tower at the center of the school. They entered an elevator and went straight to the top floor. So, this is our second Skyman an old man said. Yes. Though he seems to have his memories, but they don't correlate with Remnant in general Ospin Glinda said. Um, what do you mean by second Skyman Deku asked. A few days ago, a teenage boy also fell out of the sky, though he was in a meteor Ospin said. What Deku asked. By your reaction, I suppose you have no relationship with him Ospin asked. I have no idea what you are talking about. I don't even really know what aura and semblance are Deku said. Is that so? Well, if you have memories before coming here. Why don't you have a seat and tell us what you know Ospin said. Okay. I just want to get home as soon as possible Deku said. And we'll do what we can to help Ospin said. Deku then began to tell Ospin and Glinda about what he knows. He tells them everything about Earth quirks and other piece of information. However, he did not tell them about anything to do with all for one or one for all. And Ospin also gave Deku a quick history lesson of Remnant. How interesting. Mr. Midori R, to be honest, from what you have told me, it appears that you are from a different world to ours Ospin said. What Glinda and Deku shouted. I mean that would explain why my knowledge doesn't match yours but interdimensional or planetary travel hasn't been achieved yet. Not even by quirks, so this rules out it being any of the past users Deku muttered. What was that last part Ospin asked? Oh, um. Nothing Deku said. All right then. So, what should we do with him Glinda asked. The only thing we really can do is induct him into beacon like the others Ospin said. But that would make a team of five. Won't that draw attention to them Glinda asked. I think a new team joining Beacon halfway through the year would draw the same attention as a team of five. Anyways we can bend the rules a bit Ospin said. Glinda sighed. So, Ajuku Midori are, are you willing to join my school? We'll be able to provide you with a home and food, but you will have to become a student and pass the entrance exam tomorrow Ospin said. I don't really have much of a choice do I Deku said. I suppose you don't. Now for the exam you will be given a mission. If you and your fellow examines are able to pass, then you will be accepted into Beacon Academy Ospin said. Is that all Deku asked? Yes Glinda said. Okay. Thank you for your hospitality Deku said. Don't thank us yet. You need to pass the exam first Ospin said. Still, you've been so kind and helpful to me Deku said. It's what hunters do. We help and protect those in need Glinda said. Just like heroes Deku said. Very much like your world heroes. Now we've been talking here long enough. You need to get some sleep if you want to pass tomorrow. Glinda please take care of him. Ospin said. Yes Glinda said, slightly annoyed. Come with me Glinda said. Deku stood up and followed Glinda into the elevator and headed down. What peculiar past few days it has been Ospin said. Glinda took Deku to an area on campus. Throughout the whole walk Glinda looked annoyed. Um, Miss Goodwitch. Have I done something to upset you Deku asked. What? Oh, no. You will be staying in my room tonight. That is what annoys me Glinda said. Odaku said. The two then entered the room. The room was very neat and tidy. There was hardly any decorations though. It was a plain room with stacks of papers on the desks. Okay. You head into the shower, whilst I'll get you some nightwear and make it fit your body, but first Glinda said. Glinda put on hand one Deku's chest and one on his cheek, causing Deku to blush. For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Through this we become a paragon of virtue and glory to rise above all, infinite in distance and unbound by death. I release your soul and by my shoulder protect thee. Glinda said. Deku's body was then covered in a green light. 
What is this Deku asked? That is your aura. It protects you from damage and help you heal Glinda said. Useful Deku said. Deku then entered the bathroom and got out of his gamma costume and entered the shower. He washed up cleaning himself of all the sweat and dirt he got from his training. Soon he exited the shower and dried himself off. Miss Goodwixth, are they ready Deku asked. Just a moment. There. They won't fit perfectly but they'll do for tonight. We'll get you some fitting clothes tomorrow after your exam Glinda said, as she put the clothes in front of the door. Deku opened the door a bit and grabbed the nightwear. A few minutes later, Deku came out wearing a set of ill-fitting purple nightwear. Are they alright Glinda asked. Yeah. They are fine Deku said. Good. Now get ready for bed whilst I wash up Glinda said. Yes Mdeku said. Glinda then entered the bathroom. Meanwhile Deku found an extra pillow and duvet. He set them up on the floor. He had just laid down when. Midori Glinda called. Yes, Miss Goodwitch Deku asked. There should be a purple bottle on my desk can you bring it in for me Glinda asked. Um, sure Deku said. Deku grabbed the bottle and walked to the door. Miss Goodwitch, I have it Deku said. Good. Now bring it in. The door is unlocked Glinda said. Are you sure Deku asked. Do as I say Glinda said. Not wanting to upset Glinda, Deku opened the door and was met by a sexy sight, that got him hard immediately. Glinda was facing the mirror, so her back was turned towards Deku. The towel she wore fit to her huge boobs and ass, a little too well. The towel was a bit too small, so the towel was riding up her ass giving Deku quite the view. Something the matter Glinda asked. Um, no Deku said, as he quickly put the bottle down on the counter and quickly left. He laid in his makeshift bed trying to get the image of his future teacher's thick body, but those thoughts kept lingering. A few minutes later, Glinda came out of the bathroom wearing well-fitting nightgown, which showed of her curves like the towel. What are you doing Glinda asked. Um. Sleeping on the floor Deku said. That won't do. You have an important test tomorrow and it's already late. You need as much good sleep as possible. You will be sleeping in the bed Glinda said. But Deku tried to protest. No buts. You children need your good night's sleep, and I will not be having you be sleepy during your exam. Do you understand Glinda asked. Yes, Miss Goodwitch Deku said, with an almighty blush. He climbed into bed and faced away from Glinda, who also did the same. The bed was so soft and comfy that Deku fell asleep immediately. Forgetting all about what happened earlier. Deku slowly woke up in the morning. As he started to wake he felt two soft objects pressing on his face. He opened his eyes and saw that he was being pulled into Glinda's huge breasts. He tried to move away, but Glinda's arms kept his face there. Glinda then let out a moan of pleasure from Deku moving. No. Baby. Stay in bed Glinda muttered. Deku blushed heavily at her words. He tried to escape without waking her up, but he couldn't get free. Then Glinda started to wake up. Deku quickly shut his eyes and pretended to be asleep. Glinda opened her eyes to see what she was doing. She blushed and quickly let go of Deku. Thank gods you're still asleep Glinda said. Glinda then got out of bed. Deku opened one eye to see if she entered the bathroom. But that was the biggest mistake of his life. Glinda had not entered the bathroom. She was still in the bedroom, and she was getting changed. Deku saw Glinda stripping out of her nightgown, her figure jiggled as she undressed. Deku wanted to look away, but he just couldn't. Glinda the grabbed a set of purple lingerie and began to put it on. She was just about to put on the bra when she turned to look at Deku. Deku quickly closed his eyes before she could see him watching. Deku kept his eyes closed the rest of the time Glinda got changed. Midoriya. Wake up. 
It's almost time for your exam, Glinda said. Deku slowly opened his eyes. Did you have a good night's sleep, Glinda asked with a blush. Yeah. Your bed is very soft and comfortable, Deku said blushing. That's good. Now get changed. Your exam starts soon, Glinda said. Deku got out of bed, he picked up his costume and went to change in the bathroom. After getting changed Deku and Glinda went to the school mess hall. They got some stares from the students. They started to whisper to each other. Who is that with Miss Goodwitch a male student asked. I don't know. Could he be a new student a female student asked. I hope he is. Look at his face it's adorable another female student said. Okay. It's almost time. Let's go Glinda said. They both stood up and made their way to a cliff top that overlooked a forest. At the site Deku saw Ozpin and three other teenagers, one boy and two girls. The boy had blonde hair and was wearing a biker type of outfit. One of the girls had ginger hair and was the same height as him. She wore a white blouse and grey overalls with green highlights. The other girl was shorter than him. She had pink hair and white bunny ears. She wore a white shirt with pink blazer and trousers, and a pink top hat, they had green and red patch working on them. Ah good your heroes pin said. Hold on. I thought you said that she was going to be our last teammate. Does that mean she died the bunny girl said hopefully. To your dismay, Miss Damerot, she will still be a member of your team Ozpin laughed. Moo. Then what's with cute face Evelyn asked. Her words caused Deku to blush. This is Ajuku Midoriya. He will be joining you in this exam and will buy your fifth teammate Ozpin said. Fifth. But students are put into teams of four the ginger girl said. That is true Miss Polendana, but I have made an exception, due to certain circumstances Ozpin said. Well. It's nice to meet you Ajuku. I'm David D.I.K. Begis David said. Nice meeting you David. You can call me Deku if you want Deku said. Is that a nickname the bunny girl asked? Yeah. It's grown on me. Most of my friends back home call me Deku Deku said. Well then. Nice to meet you Deku. I'm Beacon's future resident sexy bunny, Evelyn Damerot Evelyn said. Nice to meet you Ajuku. I'm Penny Polendana Penny said. Now that introductions are over. We should move to the exam Glinda said. Right. This. Is the Emerald Forest. And it's going to be the location of your exam Ozpin said. What is our objective, Headmaster Penny asked. Objectives, Miss Polendana. First, you're to track down and group up with the last member of your team. She's already in the forest, waiting for you Ozpin said. Who are you Evelyn said. Afterwards, you will track your target Ospin said. Target David questioned. A creature of Grim, stronger and bigger than what ones usually nest close to Vale, has appeared in the Emerald Forest. You will find this creature and destroy it Ospin said. Do we get to know what Grim we are looking for Deku asked. No. Most of the time you won't have the luxury of knowing what kind of enemy awaits you beforehand. Mr. Midori Ozpin said. Figures Deku said. So we need to enter the forest, find our final member, track down this unknown Grim and kill it David said. Yes. Take your positions Ozpin said. Miss Goodwitch points at four discolored patches of grass on the ground, motioning for them to stand on them. One last thing. As it is customary for Beacon. The first person you will lay eyes on upon entering the forest will be your partner for the next four years. Though one of you will end up alone or as S3. Whichever you chose Ospin said. What? But Headmaster, I thought Penny said. Thought what, Miss Polendana Ospin asked. Penny then sadly looks at Tvid. Nothing, Headmaster Penny said. Evelyn looks at David with a big smile. She also turned to look at Deku, seeming to check him out. And to make things fair, 
you're all going to get launched at the same time as Pin said. Deku, Penny and David were shocked to hear this, but Evelyn just laughed. Before they could say anything, they were flung up into the air. You grey-haired asshole David shouted. Deku quickly got his bearings after being launched up. He activated one for all and used air force to slow down as he approached the ground. I did not expect that. Hope the others are okay Deku said. A groan then came from behind Deku. He turned around to see several black and white wolf-like creature. So, these must be the boelves as Pin mentioned. He said they were common and not very strong on their own, but in a pack they can certainly take it down a well-trained hunter Deku said. The boelves then began to encircle Deku. Okay. Time to test out my aura Deku said. Deku got in a fighting stance and waited for the Grim to make the first move. One of the Boelves jumped at Deku. Deku was easily able to dodge and kick the Boelf into a tree, killing it. Okay. Who's next Deku said. Over in another part of the Emerald Forest David had just finished killing some Grim. He had a slow met up with their last teammate. Alright. Next David said. No next mate. That was the last of them a blonde girl said. What David said. David looked around to see the rest of the Grim disintegrating. You broke out of the freeze phase pretty quickly. Not too shabby fighting skills either the girl said. Or, you're just saying that Jack David said. No, seriously. You're way better than I thought you'd be. When Ozpin told me you were a total amateur I half expected I'd have to carry you to gold bridal style Jack said. That'd make hunting down a grim pretty difficult David said. Oh. So that's what we're to do Jack asked. Yeah. Track down and destroy a particular nasty grim, after David said. Meeting up with that last member of our team Evelyn said, as she and Penny came out of the woods who of course finds David first and becomes his partner. Mua Yua Yua Eva Lin said. Hi. I'm Penny Penny introduced. Jack, these are my friends and two of your other three teammates. She's Penny and the other Gitl is David started to introduce. You Jack shouted. Me. We meet again, murderer Eva Lin shouted. Stop calling me that or I swore to the God's Isle. What are you even doing here Jack asked. Oh. Didn't you hear your partner, Poisoner? I'm one of your new teammates Evelyn said. No Jack said. For the next four years Evelyn teased. Over my dead body Jack shouted. Oh, if you insist. Allow me. We already have a replacement Evelyn shouted. Ha. Bring it on, carrots. I'll tie your ears in a double overhead and then beat that grey-haired asshole to a pulp with your furry ass. Wait what do you mean, you already have a replacement Jack asked. There's a fifth member to our team, but that won't matter soon. At least his food won't be poisoned Evelyn shouted. Okay, time out David said. David moves in between the girls to separate them far enough to they can't reach each other. What's going on, here? You two know each other already David asked. How could I forget the face of my would-be killer Evelyn said. For the love of gods, I was not trying to kill you. But you certainly making me wish otherwise Jack shouted. You've lost the privilege of me trusting anything coming out of your mouth or made by your hands a long time ago Evelyn shouted. Ah. Be prepared to lose trust in your face, then Jack shouted. Um Penny said. Calm down, already. What the hell happened between you two David asked. She insulted me Jack shouted. After you tried to give me food poisoning Evelyn shouted. What? Food poisoning David questioned. Um, I'm sorry but Penny said. Not my fault your stomach can only handle carrots Jack said. Sure, the fault is in my stomach. Not in your awful cooking Evelyn said. There's nothing wrong with my cooking Jack said. We almost botched a mission because I was too sick to even speak properly Evelyn said. 
Maybe you caught the flu or something on the way there Jack said. Everyone, please Penny said. What kind of scatterbrain would get herself sick before going in dangerous territory Evelyn asked. The kind who pairs magenta with green and red Jack said. It's my artistic vision. Yeah Evelyn said. You're artistic what David asked. Will the three of you pay attention to me, already Penny shouted very loudly. Sorry, Penny. What is it David asked? I'm sorry for being rude, but I need to. Evelyn, Miss Blonde Hair Penny said. M, Jack. You can call me Jack. Nice to meet you Jack said. Jack. It's a pleasure. What I wanted to say is, you and Evelyn are being awfully negative, right now Penny said. Bollocks Jack said. Crap Evelyn said. We should prepare Penny said. We. Don't have that much time. There's something coming our way Evelyn said. Evelyn and Penny produced their weapons and got ready to fight. Of all the places to meet carrots aging. Evelyn, what do you hear Jack asked. Quick footsteps. Rapid but not heavy. And there's the sound of rustling leaves but no destruction Evelyn said. Is it a single enemy Penny asked. Yes Evelyn said. For the love of. What exactly did Ospin want us to hunt Jack asked. But how did it find us before we found it if it was so far away David asked. What do you mean how. We were inches away from a cat fight there Jack said. Jack, David suffers from amnesia. He knows very little about Remnant and the Grim Penny said. You can't be serious Jack said. David, Grim are attracted by negative emotions Evelyn said. What? You mean it found us because of your fight David asked. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have done that in a Grim infested forest. But she gets on my nerves Evelyn said. We can do that later. Now focus, damn it. What do we know about this thing Jack asked. Ospin said it's not native to the Emerald Forest David said. It was also implied to be particularly dangerous, so it's safe to assume it's not a common Grim Penny said. So we're looking at a single, dangerous Grim who's agile enough to move through this thick forest without causing unnecessary damage and whose footsteps are clicks. It doesn't sound like any Grim I've ever encountered Evelyn said. Oh, darn it. I know what kind of grim it is Jack said. You do David asked. It's a Jack said. The grim that came out of the woods. It looked like a mantis. It had two side like claws at the front and big red eyes. There was white plating that covered the some part of the grim. That's a Wallang. We've got to get out of this thicket immediately. We need open ground Jack said. There's a large glade to the north of here Penny said. You. So creepy. But wouldn't the forest give you more cover Evelyn asked. No amount of cover would do us any good, fighting this thing Jack said. The Wallang the backup. Its body shimmered with refracted light, and soon it disappeared. Oh shit David shouted. Let's get out of here Jack shouted. The four quickly make a break for the clearing to the north. It's right behind us, isn't it David asked. Darn right it is. Jack said. I'm not stopping to check Evelyn shouted. Can we even outrun it in a forest David asked. I'm sorry that you couldn't be eased into these kinds of situations, David. But sometimes you have no penny said. Duck Evelyn shouted. Holy David said. A tree was cut by the Wallang and began to fall. The four narrowly dodged the tree. Less talky, more runny Evelyn said. What Evelyn said. Not all enemies will allow you to think about your next move, David. Sometimes you to just act Penny said. The trees. It's coming again Evelyn said. David, watch out. Dodge Penny said. Another tree fall down, almost hitting David. Good job, David Penny said. 
I don't think you're supposed to compliment people on avoiding death but thanks, anyway David said. Keep in mind though that unlike now, you will more often than not have a limited time to make your decisions Penny said. How much further, Penny Jack asked. 704th two. Watch out Penny shouted. A tree a few paces in front of them had started to fall and was going to block their path. We can't slow down Jack said. Slide under David was saying. An air bullet came out of the forest and destroyed the falling tree only leaving a small stump of it left. Holy! What was that Evelyn asked? Just then a green blur came out of the forest. It jumped between the trees getting further ahead of them. It then landed on a tree and then the green blur came quickly towards them, but the left. There was then a sound of an impact followed by the Walang screeching. The green blur then appeared next to them and slowed down to Shodaku. What the? You were able to hit that thing David asked. Yeah. I've had practice with invisible targets Deku said. That's impressive, but how did you find us Evelyn asked. I heard the call of a wild ginger Deku said, causing Penny to blush with embarrassment. Thanks for the help, 5th Jack said. No problem the 4th Deku said. The now team of five continued their sprint to the clearing. The glade is right in front of us Penny said. What's the plan, now David asked. Depends. How do you feel, David Jack asked. I feel. I feel fine. Don't worry about me David said. Glad to hear it. Listen up. The moment we break out of the thicket turn around and fire everything you've got. Got it Jack said. I'm going middle Evelyn said. I'll aim high Penny said. So will I Deku said. I'm going low then David said. I'll join you, partner. When I count from three. Three Jack said. Two Evelyn said. One Penny said. The five then turned around and fired everything they had at the Walang. Did we get it David asked. Oh we, got him for sure Jack said. But it's not over yet Evelyn said. The Walang comes out of the woods still alive, but heavily injured. Its left back leg and right middle leg are missing, and a pair of wings are damaged and riddled with holes. Final round, team. You ready Jack asked. The five began their final assault on the Walang. Deku was firing air bullets and bouncing off the high points punching and kicking the Walang as he flew past it. Evelyn, now Jack said. Penny, give me a boost Evelyn said. Affirmative Penny said. David, it's arms Jack said. Got it David said. He used his whip to restrain it. Evelyn then goes into Penny's hand as then Penny shoots Evelyn towards the Walang. At the same time Deku bounced of a tree and flew towards the Walang's head. As Deku approached Evelyn had stabbed it in the head causing it to fall, and so was now on a collision course with Evelyn. Watch out Deku said. Oh shit Evelyn said. Just before impact Deku used his air force gauntlets to fire himself out of the way, like Bakugo does with his explosions. Though this causes him to crash onto the ground and slide towards Jack. You okay number 5 Jack asked. Yeah. I'm okay number 4 Deku said. Let me help you up. I'm Jack Jack introduced. I Deku. But most call me Deku Deku introduced. That was quite impressive. Being able to hit an invisible target is something most hunters can't do Jack said. Well most hunters don't have a friend whose Q semblance allows them to turn invisible Deku said. Well it's nice to know we don't have another amateur on our team Jack said. That was incredible. But Jack, how did you know Evelyn could do that David asked. This is not the first time we've fought together. As much as I hate to admit it she's terribly good with that weapon of hers Jack said. Still, good job, David. Penny Ijuku. You reacted to our cues quickly and efficiently. That was great teamwork. Minus that last part Jack said. Guess that could use a bit of work Deku said. 
for real. I've never worked in a team before, so I thought Penny said. Penny, you were incredible David said. More than that. Spectacular. Your aim was true and you didn't make MW lose any momentum. It's like my legs were pushing off solid metal Evelyn said. M, it was no trouble at all. I just have a particularly deep knowledge of momentum and forces of action reaction Penny said. And high physical strength. I'm no sluff, you're probably stronger than me Jack said. She gives the best hugs in the world, that's for sure David said. We're gonna need an orthopedist on standby if she hugs with her full strength Evelyn said. The group breaks out into laughter. Well. It seems congratulations are in order, children Ospin said. Headmaster Ospin David said in surprise. You were watching Penny asked. Not this closely all the time but did you think we would let five children enter this forest on a dangerous mission without supervision Ospin said. Yes Evelyn said. For all we know, you went all the way to Mistral to get a Wallang just to make this test more difficult Jack said. Why, children, do you think I would ever Ospin said. Yes Jack and Evelyn shouted. Anyway, are you here to take us back to Beacon, Headmaster David asked. Among other things Ospin said. Ospin then points at the ruins scattered throughout the glade. The Emerald Forest was once home to a flourishing civilization. It could be considered a precursor of modern Vale. But like civilization are wont to do in Remnant, it fell. Those that came after it learned from its fall, from its internal strife and wars. And yet we repeated the same mistakes. Children. We live in a world where learning from the past is not good enough anymore. So what other option is left to us Ospin said. Wani what's in front of us now? The present Deku said. Yes, Mr. Midoriya. We learn from what's around us. We learn from other people, especially those who are different from us. Only seeking to interact who think the same as you puts a limit to what can be learned from each other. Which is why it's important to try and make ties with as many people as possible. Even those you may disagree with on certain issues Ospin said. Jack and Evil inside. You five are as different from each other as can be. You all have unique pasts, ideologies and aspirations but it's my belief that despite these differences you will rise above the challenges before you victorious. Wiser and more united for the experience. Just like you did earlier today. Jacqueline B. Ivory. Penny Polendana. David D. I. K. Begis. Ajuku Midoriya. Evelyn Damarot. From today onwards and forevermore, led by Miss Ivory, you will be. Team Jaddy Ospin said. Wait a minute. There's no in either Penny's initials Evelyn said. And shouldn't I Juku be and I not AD Penny asked. That depends on who you ask. Isn't that right Deku Jack said. Yeah Deku said. The five then returned to Beacon. Whilst the others went to the dorm room Ijuku went into Vale with Glinda to get some clothes and other necessities. It was very late when they returned. Okay for your first I want you to come to my room at night. So, I can teach you what you need to know to blend in Glinda said. Yes Miss Goodwitch I'll see you tomorrow Deku said. Deku then left for the dorm room. He entered to see the other just about to go to bed. Where did you go Jack asked. Getting some essentials Deku said. But why? Don't you have bags of that stuff Evelyn asked. I kind of left in a hurry. Didn't have time to pack my bags. Also, why are you three in here Deku asked. Because it's our dorm room Evelyn said. But boys and girls in the same room Deku said. Guess I'm not the only one who's old fashioned David said. I Deku. All four Hunter Academies are co-ed, it's been like that for decades. How do you not know that Penny asked? I grew up in a village in Anima and students were split into quarters by gender Deku said. Wait. That sounds like the pre-Hunter Academies Jack said. What are those David asked? 
their school for students to attend it before joining one of the main hunter academies. They help train students get ready. Usually, people attended these schools between 14 to 18. Ajuku how old are you Penny asked. I'm 16. I was 15 only a few months ago Deku said. Oh wow. Only 16 and that skilled, that's impressive Evelyn said. Really Deku asked. Yes. There is another student here around your age though. Her name is Ruby Rose, my best friend Penny said. It's nice to know I'm not alone. Alright I'm gonna hit the shower and then. Wait there are only four beds Deku said. Oh. That won't be a problem. You can sleep with me. I won't be it, unless you are into that Evelyn said very seductively. Um. I think I'm gonna pass on that offer Deku said with a blush. You can share my bed Ajuku David said. Are you sure? I wouldn't want to get in the way of you and Penny Deku said. Oh, no you misunderstand me and David are not in any kind of romantic or sexual relationship Penny said. Really then why is her bed up against yours Deku asked. Our little ginger got scared that I would do something to David, so she moved her bed closer to protect him Evelyn said. Penny blushed and looked away in embarrassment. I see. If there are no issues, then we can share a bed David Deku said. Fine by me David said. Who are you? That's a shame, but if things don't work out. My offer is still on the table cute face. I promise to take good care of you and your goods Evelyn said seductively. Deku blushed heavily and then quickly made his way into the bathroom. After his shower he put on his nightwear and climbed into bed, and went to sleep, think about the situation he has found himself in. Monday. Day 1. Deku woke up early in the morning, the sun hadn't even risen yet. Deku got out of bed and headed to the bathroom to change. He put on his gamma outfit and exited the bathroom, as he did he saw that Penny was up. Ajuku. What are you doing up so early Penny asked. I could ask you the same. Also why are you looking over David Deku asked. Oh, um. David suffers from amnesia, and since I was the first one to make contact with him, I just want to make sure he's okay Penny said with a blush. So, you are a protector Deku said. Yes. I want to protect the world and exterminate the grim Penny said. Same here. I want to protect the world and be its hero Deku said. Don't you mean Hunter Penny asked. Nope. A hero Deku said. Then I wish you the best of luck, Ajuku Penny said. Thanks. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going for my regular morning run Deku said. You get up this early to run. Getting up this early can be bad for you Penny said. Should you be following your own advice Deku asked. Um, yes, but you see. I'm a light sleeper, the quietest noise or slight change in light can wake me up Penny said, followed by a hiccup. I see, then I'll be sure to be quiet when I get up. Now to answer your question. I still have a long way to go before I can be Remnant's hero. I still have so much to learn, and I need to master my semblance Deku said. I can already tell that you are a hard worker, but please, don't hurt yourself in any way Penny said. Already kind of late with that advice Deku said. What do you mean Penny asked? I'll explain later. Soon there will be not time for my run. I'll see you in a bit Penny Deku said, walking to the door. Okay. Make sure you are back in time to get ready from school Penny said. I will. Don't worry Deku said. Deku then left the dorm rooms and began his run around Beacon's campus. As he made his way around the campus, he saw two other students doing the same. One was a boy with blonde hair, who seemed to be out of breath. The other student was a girl with bright crimson hair. She didn't even look like she was breaking a sweat. Come on Jan. You should be able to do this easily the girl said. I know. Pira, but. We've been training throughout our time off. I need to rest for a bit Jan said. 
Oh, sorry Pira said. It's fine. You are trying to help me catch up, and I thank you for that, but I need a break. Can we continue this next week John asked. Sure, but next time tell me when you need a break. I don't want to see you hurt Pira said. Okay John said. Deku then passed the two. Who was that John asked. I don't know. He must be one of the new students Pira said. Soon Deku returned to his dorm room. Welcome back Ijuku Penny said. Deku gave Penny a smile. And where did you go Jack asked. Just out for a run Deku said. Huh. But it's so early. What's wrong with you Evelyn asked. Evelyn Jack said. What Evelyn said. Deku laughed. I have a lot to catch up on. Especially since you guys are two years older than me Deku said. I like your style Ijuku. Though you shouldn't be in a rush to do so, David is the one who really needs to catch up quickly Jack said. Hey. I'd say I'm doing fine, for what happened to me David said. I suppose so. Not having any memories and being put into a meteor would mean you have a lot to catch up on Deku said. How? How do you know that Penny asked? Ozpin told me. He didn't give me anything specific, but he gave a basic overview of the situation Deku said. Guess that makes sense. Though why didn't he tell me about it? I only found out during the exam Jack said. Deku shrugged. Moo. No fair why couldn't that grey haired asshole let me have some fun with you Evelyn said. I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances, Carrots Jack said. I'll be making sure you are first poisoner Evelyn said. Will you drop Jack shouted. We should start getting ready for school Penny said. Penny's right. School will be starting soon, and I don't want to miss breakfast David said. Okay. Let me just have a quick shower before we get changed Deku said. Deku entered the bathroom and had his quick shower. After his shower he let David into the bathroom, and they got into their uniform. I've conquered you, necktie. Mwehaha David said. No you haven't Deku said. Deku then grabbed David's tie and did it up neatly. They're much better Deku said. Thanks. But how can you do my tie up whilst you do yours all small and stumpy David asked. I didn't know how to do a tie at first, so this happened. I learned how to do it properly, but it kind of became my style, you know Deku said. I see. Evelyn. Can we come out David asked. Of course, you guys can. The real question is. Should you? Fu 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 Evelyn said. All right, other question. Have you 100% finished changing into your uniform David asked. Oh no, he's learning. He's soon going to overthrow his masters Evelyn said. Evelyn David said. David Evelyn said. We're coming out David said. And women everywhere rejoiced Evelyn said. But we're not in a closet Deku said. David and Deku then exited the bathroom, and thankfully Evelyn was dressed, but that just created another problem. So. How do I look Evelyn asked. How many words can I use David asked. The uniform Evelyn was wearing hugged her large curves very nicely, much better than her regular clothes. She wore a mini skirt that showed off her thighs and legs. Or. Oh. Am I so sexy you're at a loss for words Evelyn asked. I have words. I don't know if I should voice them David said. Kept the profanities to one word and you can go right ahead and worship me Evelyn said. Haughty, aren't we David asked. So, Deku, what do you think Evelyn asked? It looks good on you Deku said. Is that it? You have nothing else to say. Nothing about how it shows off my voluptuous curves and makes you Evelyn asked. You are very, very blunt aren't you Deku said. That's part of my charm Evelyn said. Um, Evelyn. David. Deku. I'm coming out as well Penny said. 
Penny then opens the kitchen door and enters the room. How? How do I look? Penny asked. Oh, my gods, Penny. Your adorable Evelyn said. It looks very good on you, Penny David said. It fits you very well, Deku said. Thanks. I've never worn a uniform before, Penny said, blushing. While Penny is not as voluptuous as Evelyn, the uniform still nicely showed of her figure. Penny, why do you still have your collar on under the uniform? David asked. I have a scar. Yes, a positively ugly scar that I wish to keep hidden from sight at all times, Penny said, followed by a hiccup. Oh, well. If you need a collar that covers the entirety of your neck, it must be a pretty big scar, Evelyn said. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry, David said. Oh, I don't mind. It's perfectly fine, Penny said. Penny. There is no need to worry about scars. I have plenty of my own, Deku said. You do, Penny asked. He does. All along his arms. He has one big one on his right arm, David said. Oh, well. Do you mind telling how you got them? What kind of grim gave you those Evelyn asked? Um, actually they are self-inflicted scars Deku said. Three looked at him in shock and then sadness. Not like that. I got them from overusing my semblance Deku said. That's a relief Penny said. Yeah. For a second there I thought I might have to hug you until you felt better cute face Evelyn said, causing Deku to blush. Anyways, you two are in luck, for I am an expert at scar removal Evelyn said. You are David and Penny asked. I am. I can prepare a salve that periodically applied Evelyn said. I'm coming out Jack said. Please do come right out this very instant, hack. We're awaiting your reveal with fervent curiosity Penny said hiccuping again. Jack then enters the dorm room but her uniform is different to Penny's and Evelyn's, in the face that it was the male uniform. What Evelyn said. Jack Penny said. Hey, what's wrong with the four of you? Did I get the not wrong Jack asked. No, it's. Perfect David said. Jack, that's. The male uniform Penny said. Who are you, yeah Jack said. Why Evelyn asked. Cause I don't like skirts. Bloody hell, does it look that bad on me Jack asked. It doesn't and that's the problem Evelyn said. Carrots what does that even mean Jack asked. Evelyn bites down on what she was going to say. She goes over to the apartment door and leans her head against it three times. Seriously, what's her problem Jack asked. There's. Nothing wrong. But I guess it's. Attention grabbing Penny said. That's it. Let people watch, who cares Jack said. Yeah. Who cares David said. I think Evelyn does Deku said. Well, I don't care what Evelyn thinks. Now though Jack said. Jack then walks up to Deku. Hold still for a moment Jack said. Jack you don't need to fix my tie Deku said. But it's so messy. Here I thought David would need help Jack said. Well, I do actually. Deku did up my tie David said. Then why is it like this Jack asked. It sort of became my style, so to speak Deku said. Well then, I'll leave you alone. My dad always said. A bad tie makes a bad day. If you need help just ask. Now, let's go to breakfast. Carrots, get off the door, will ya Jack said. Hate you Evelyn said. Come on, partner. Most important meal of the day Jack said. Evelyn gets off the door and Jack grabs David by the shoulders and then proceeds to push him towards the door. Of course, you realize this means war Evelyn said. What Deku asked. I Deku Penny said. Yes Deku said. Please teach me how to do a tie Penny said. Um, okay. Sure, I can Deku said. Penny, Evelyn and Deku then followed after Jack and David. The five then arrived at the mess hall. Damn. 
I've never seen so many people all eating in the same place Jack said. Me neither. The school was mostly empty the last few days David said. Well, knowing I'm not the only one who's never lived the school life makes me feel at ease. Sharing the pain and all that Jack said. What? You've never attended an academy David asked. Never ever, partner Jack said. But you're so strong David said. Flatterer. You haven't even seen my semblance Jack said. FYI, I've never attended a combat academy either Evelyn said. Neither have I Penny said. Seriously. I'm the only one who's been to a combat academy. That's weird, a majority being a minority Deku said. I have to call bullshit on you three. You've obviously all been trained in combat, or am I on a team with three fighting savants David asked. Of course, we've been trained, dummy. But do you think combat academies are the only places in Remnant where you can learn to fight Evelyn asked. I don't know, are they? For all I know they could be David said. Oh, right. You're missing memory Jack said. There are other venues available to those who wish to learn the art of combat on Remnant. Retired or injured hunters can take apprentices and there are non-hunters versed in the workings of aura and dust living outside of the Four Kingdoms Penny said. I see. Sounds reasonable David said. Glad it does. Now let's get some grub, I'm famished Jack said. The five then grabbed some food and sat down. Well. This is the best food I've had eaten in months Jack said. Oh. But don't you usually cook for yourself Evelyn asked. Of course I do. But I. I can do miracles while on the road Jack said. How's the food, Penny David asked. Home, it's definitely nutritionally balanced but I think the eggs were slightly overcooked. Probably to give them more consistency before the scrambling procedure Penny said. Penny. You could have just said they were good enough Deku said. But it wouldn't have been sufficiently informative to answer to his inquiry Penny said. Thanks for the concern but I was just trying to make small talk, Penny David said. Oh. Sorry, I. I'm not used to it so I can't properly distinguish yet Penny said. Oh, it's fine. To be honest, it's kind of cute. Now watch and learn. Ajuku how is your food David asked. It's okay, it's not the best food I've had from a mess hall. But it's still good Deku said. See. An answer so simple an amnesiac can understand David said. You called me cute Penny said quietly. What was that Deku asked. You two are doing this to distract me, aren't you Penny asked. What? I have no idea what you're talking about David said. Calling me. And my mannerisms cute, because you remember how I reacted the day we met Penny said. Oh, that. Yes, I may be trying to make you blush on purpose David said. Thanks. But you don't have to worry so much, I'm not a particularly negative person Penny said. But you made such a kicked puppy face. It was just a little communication mishap. Why does it get you so down David asked. I'm gonna have to call this out. You two are definitely acting like a couple Deku said, causing David and Penny to blush. But we really aren't. We met not even a week ago and Penny said. Penny. Everyone. Good morning a girl called. Ruby. Good morning David said. Ruby. A good morning from me as well Penny said. Thanks. But enough about me, you. You're wearing the beacon uniform Ruby said. Ruby then dashed over to Penny and hugged her tightly. That means you've passed initiation. Congratulations Ruby said. Thanks, Ruby Penny said. Penny then returns the hug, with a big smile on her face. Oh, no hug for me Evelyn asked. Oh hi, Evelyn is that your fourth Ruby said, stopping mid-sentence when she saw what Jack was wearing. Um. You're a girl right Ruby asked. Sure um. The name's Jacqueline B. Ivory, but you can call me Jack Jack said. 
Oh, thank goodness. I mean, you're so pretty and your hair is so long I thought of course she must be a girl but you have the male uniform on so I got confused Ruby said. It's alright. I guess I'm the only female student who wears the male uniform Jack asked. As far as I know. But seriously, it looks better on you than the guys Ruby said. And she knows how to tie a tie properly Deku said. Um, who are you Ruby asked. Ruby. This is our fifth teammate. Ayuku Midori Upenny said. Wait fifth, but why five Ruby asked. You'll have to ask Ospin. That's even if he gives you a straight answer Evelyn said. Well it's nice to meet you Ayuku, I'm Ruby Rose Ruby said. Nice to meet you, Ruby. You can call me Deku Deku said. Is that a nickname Ruby asked. Yeah, some use it instead of Ayuku Deku said. That's kind of weird Ruby said. Oh, yeah. Ruby there's something special about Ayuku, that will make you very happy Penny said. Really? What is it Ruby asked. He's 16 Penny said. Wait really Ruby asked. Yep. Turned 16 a few months ago Deku said. Finally. I'm not longer the bee's knees young Ruby shouted. Okay, three questions. Are you the guy Ruby was making a weapon for? What is she making a fool out herself now and what do you mean by no longer the bee's knees a voice asked. Walking over to the table was a girl with long blonde hair. She also had a voluptuous figure, but Evelyn's curves are bigger than hers. Young. I wasn't embarrassing myself, I was asking a completely legitimate question. And now I'm not the only one who is much younger than the rest Ruby said. Wait really? Who are they young asked? The green one. His name is Ajuku and he's only a few months older than me Ruby said. Hello Deku said. That still makes you the youngest young teased. So she's the girl who used common sense on you David asked. Oh my gods, she actually said that out loud young laughed. David. That was subhapsed to be private Ruby shouted. It was David asked. Yes Ruby shouted. Why didn't you tell me David asked. What do you mean why didn't you? Oh right. You don't know young Ruby said. Well, that's a dig of you David said. A crime, more like it. I'm young. Ruby's teammate and older sister young said. Wait, what? Older sister David asked. The two look nothing alike. I'm David. And yes, Ruby did make my weapon and I will make sure to repay her David said. Glad to know that. And hi, Penny. I couldn't believe it when Ruby said. You were going to be attending Beacon as well Young said. I couldn't believe it myself at first. It's a pleasure to see you again, Young. David is my teammate Penny said. Hey there Young said. Hey there yourself. Evelyn Damerot Evelyn said. And this is our team leader and David's partner, Jacqueline Penny said. Be Ivory. But you can call me Jack Jack said. Another blonde, finally. I was starting to despair, only having John to share it with Young said. I heard that a voice shouted. So who's greeny with Young asked. I'm just on my own I guess Deku said. Honestly, I think you should be Jack's partner. You are both strong and smart. You would be perfect together David said. Yeah but you still have a lot to learn. Having Jack as your partner is overall better for the team Deku said. Wow, Jack. Never thought I'd see the day when two boys fight over you Evelyn said, causing Deku and David to blush. Don't worry about who's my partner. I can take on two partners at once Jack said. Bo chicka bo wow Evelyn and Young said. Not. Like that Jack said, with a blush. And here I hoped she was one to break the stereotype. Between you and the dunce, I have half a mind of removing from my life anything even remotely resembling a shade of yellow a girl with white hair said, as she walked over. You must be wise, then David asked. 
Oh wow, Weiss. You got another admirer Young said. What are you talking about? Admirer David asked. Oh, come on, don't play dumb. How else would you know Weiss Cream's name Young asked. I guess you know me from my singing career. Or are you an estimator of my family Weiss asked. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding here. I have no idea who Weiss is supposed to be, except for Ruby's teammate David said. Ruby laughed, while Young and Weiss looked at David in shock. Okay, seriously. Why is that so shocking? What's so funny David asked. For real Young asked. He seems to be telling the truth. At least I think so a voice said. Walking over to them was a girl with black hair with a bow on top. But the question is. How does he know Weiss name the girl asked. The better question is. How does he not know Weiss asked. I'm Blake, by the way. Blake Belladonna. Nice to meet you, everyone. And hello again, Penny Blake said. David D.I.K. Begis. But seriously, I have no idea who Weiss is outside of her relationship to Ruby. And even that was a guess David said. Meaning Young asked. Penny told me about a teammate of Ruby who has great fashion sense and Ruby herself mentioned the name in passing. 50-50, so I took a guess David said. Oh, that's true Penny said. The three looked at David in surprise. Home. Well, considering the information at your disposal, it's logical that you'd come to that conclusion. You certainly couldn't have made that bet on Young or Blake Weiss said. Excuse me Blake asked. Hey Young said. I'm Weiss Shani Weiss said. I see. It's a pleasure David said. Oh, the pleasure is all mine Weiss said. Seriously a voice shouted. Now, I'd love to stay and chat some more Weiss said. The bell then went. I'm afraid classes are about to begin. We should all hurry Weiss said. Oh. The bell. We only have half an hour Penny said. I'm sure we will see each other during classes. Have a good day. I can call you David, right Weiss asked. Oh come on the same voice said. Sure. If I can call you Weiss David said. Absolutely. Have a good day, David. Everyone Weiss said. Who are you, this is unfair. Do you have any idea how long it took me to get Weiss to be friendly to me? What's your secret Ruby asked. Ruby. I haven't the foggiest idea David said. Home. This isn't over. Not by a long shot Ruby said. Well, that's a weird team David said. You sure? I'm pretty sure we are the weirdest, with going halfway through the year and being a five member team Deku said. Good point. Anyway, she doesn't seem that bad David said. You mean Weiss Evelyn asked. Considering what you told me about her family's company David said. She's just the youngest daughter of the family, it's not like she has any administrative power. ANS hey, she's an individual like the rest of us. Even if statistically humans and faunas don't get along that well, I like to always keep an open mind. If I thought that every human I meet is a racist. Talk about self-fulfilling prophesies Evelyn said. Weiss is Ruby's partner. I don't think she would be able to get along with a genuinely bad person. Although, she did warm up to you. Uncharacteristically quickly Penny said. I am guessing from what you are saying the Ski family isn't exactly clean Deku said. Wait how do you not know that Evelyn asked. My village has no dust deposits, so we have to import it. And that's even if it gets up there. We take all the dust we can get no matter who it is from. Also, we don't have great scroll communication. So how bad is it Deku asked. You don't know the half of it Jack angrily said. What's the matter Jack David asked. She does seem like a nice girl Jack said. Jack. You okay? There Deku asked. It's. It's nothing, Ajuku. 
I'm sorry. Let's go refresh ourselves and then to class, alright Jack said. Jack then stood up and started to walk away. Did something happen Penny asked. I really don't know Penny Deku said. The four then stood up and joined Jack to class. As they entered the classroom, they noticed that there were no seats of four. Of course, that wouldn't really matter with a team of five, but still they wouldn't be sitting close to each other. Bummer. Oh well, we'll have to make new friends Jack said. Sounds good. I'll see you guys after classes David said. They look around for open seats. There was space for two students on the far left, which Jack and Ijuku take. Soon the professor entered the classroom. The professor was a short stubby man with one hell of a moustache. Children, I welcome you back into these halls the professor said. Ah, port hasn't changed at all during the break Young said. Hey. Seems like Young doesn't like this class Jack said. I think she doesn't like Professor Port, more than this class Deku said. I hope you used these weeks to relax, catch up with family and friends left behind. Because from today on, we're getting back to familiarizing ourselves with our prey. For our enemy is relentless. And always up for feasting on scrumptious human morsels. Even in the comfort of our homes, even in our most private moments. Why, for example, I remember one time Port said. The class lets out a collective groan. Scratch that. I think the whole class hates Port Jack said. There I was, deep in enemy territory, having just felled a particularly strong adversary. It was a long and hard fought battle, but that's a story for another time Port said. Thank you, God's young said. I was so satisfied with my catch that I decided to help myself to my guilty pleasure. A bag of a fine blend of vacuo tea. A boiling kettle and a whistle later, lo and behold I was about to enjoy my piece of nirvana port said. I think I understand why the class reacted like that Deku said. Yeah. Seems he's one for rambling about himself, instead of teaching Jack said. But alas, soon a new enemy appeared to chastise me for my mistake. Even though my immediate surroundings had been cleared by my own hands, an appell swooped down from the sky. Quick my hand went to my weapon, swiftly holding it up to shield myself from the beast's mighty dive. Stumbling but not knocked to the ground, I flexed and pirouetted up in the air, my might war axe swinging port said. He's not going to stop until the end of class, isn't he Jack said. No I don't think so Deku said. I've been in similar situations but none of them made me sleepy. Don't let me fall asleep Jack said. I'll try, but I might as well Deku said, followed by a yawn. Port then continued to talk for the whole class. Lo and behold, my enemy was defeated and faded at my feet Port said. Jack and Deku had managed to keep wake, by each other tapping and pinching each other. That experience taught me many a valuable lessons, which I saw fit to share with you today Port said. Bloody hell. He expects us to listen all through that. Ijuku, you have any clue what he wanted us to learn Jack asked. I think I have an idea. Was the lesson about the grim senses. More specifically about the appell sense of hearing, Professor Port Deku asked. Indeed it was. Very observant young man. The appell is a grim shaped like a bat and just like their animal counterparts they have bad eyesight but incredible hearing, and locate their prey with echolocation. Even from afar the whistle of my kettle had attracted it like a moth to the flame. And if I hadn't been keeping my weapon by my side, I would have died with his first attack. Always have your weapon at hand when in a hostile environment, children. You never know when you may need it Port said. Well, he spent all that time to tell us that Grim are like animals. Great, I'm learning so much Jack sarcastically said. The bell then went, signifying the end of class. That's all the time we have for today, children. I encourage you to review and possibly deepen your knowledge about appels. Have a bountiful day Port said. Shoot. 
You're telling me we were supposed to pay attention all this time Young asked. Will you pipe down? And of course you were supposed to pay attention. You're in school Y said. Let's go eat. I'm famished, and I haven't been doing much Jack said. Let's, as much as I like to learn. That was really boring Deku said. The two then stood up and headed to the mess hall with the others. Ah. Uh. Penny, seriously, what's your secret Jack asked. Who, I feel so sluggish Evelyn said. I have no idea how I kept awake through it all David said. Me and Jack had to stop each other from falling asleep Deku said. I guess I'm just used to listening to long speeches. My father has a habit of going into his own little world and muttering out his own thoughts Penny said. Practice makes perfect, Ha huh, David said. I have no desire whatsoever to practice enduring that Evelyn said. For once, I agree with Evelyn. I'm glad that's over and done with Jack said. Until next week Deku said. Nuu. Gods why have you forsaken me Evelyn asked looking up. So, what do you want to do with the afternoon Jack said. I think I'll go into Vale David said. Want to inquire about that part time job Evelyn asked. That's the plan, yes. I also thought about asking about helping in the kitchens like you mentioned, but they said to come back tomorrow David said. Do you want company, David Penny asked. Nah, it's okay. And I have the sneaking suspicion that you'd try and dissuade me David said. Hey. I will be awaiting your return, then Penny said. And remember that the last bulkhead to Beacon is at 10pm Evelyn said. I will keep that in mind. See you later, girls and guy David said. Later partner Jack said. David then left the mess hall. So what are you going to do, Ajuku Penny asked. I've got plans for the evening, but right now I'm going to explore Beacon. Haven't had the chance to look around it yet Deku said. If you're going around Beacon, then you'll need a guide, and luckily for you, this bunny has experience Evelyn said. Thanks. I'll be glad if you showed me around Deku said. Great, so get you butt up and let's go Evelyn said. I thought you said you felt sluggish, where'd this energy come from Jack asked. From being out of hell and having a good meal Evelyn said. Evelyn then took Deku to all the places she visited with David. And that concludes, Big Bunny's tour Evelyn said. Thanks, but is that it? Where is the gym and library, those things should be standard in a hunter academy Deku said. They are, but I don't know where they are. I haven't been here often, and when I am, I'm here for at most a night Evelyn said. I see. Then shall we explore Deku asked. Sure, why not? Might find some cool places Evelyn said. The two then walked around and found the library. Wow, this is a big library Evelyn said. Guess there are a lot of books on hunter things Deku said. That's true, but I also think there are just books for fun Evelyn said. I think David should spend a lot of time here Deku said. He also needs to spend time at the gym. Now let's find it Evelyn said. The two soon found the gym. Well. This place looks brand new Evelyn said. Maybe it was refurbished or it's a new building and the old one got torn down Deku said. Well, I now know where I can get all hot and sweaty Evelyn said, causing Deku to blush. And I guess I can exercise Evelyn said. Okay Deku said looking away from Evelyn. He saw a girl with ginger lifting weights. She stopped and got up. She was very sweaty, so sweaty that Deku could see through her shirt and saw her pink bra. The girl then looked over to Deku, and he quickly looked away. The girl then smiled. Deku then got a message on his scroll. I have to go. My plans start soon Deku said. Oh. But don't you want to train Evelyn said. I do, but I have other things I need to take care of Deku said. Okay then, be sure to tell me when you come here. I'll be sure to help you Evelyn said seductively. Deku left without saying a word. 
Deku soon arrived at Glinda's room. So, Mr. Midoriya. What do you want to go over first Glinda asked. Tell me everything about dust and everything associated with it. If I'm going to blend in, I better know more about it Deku said. Glinda then sat Deku down and began to teach Deku about dust, as she did so though she inadvertently pressed her breast against his back and head. Deku did learn some things, but Glinda kept on distracting him. A few hours later the lesson was over and Deku returned to his dorm room. Welcome back Aizuku. Did your thing go well Evelyn asked. Not really, but I'll be able to sort that out Deku said. Oh, really what happened Penny asked. Remember when I told you my village doesn't get much dust Deku said. Yeah, what about it Evelyn asked. Well the dust that we do get goes to homes and defenses. Which means us trainees don't get much use of dust. That's why my gear has no dust capabilities Deku said. Really, then how would they become effective hunters without knowing how to use dust Penny asked. We go over theory in normal classes, but for dust use, students only get to use it when they are taken out of the village by a hunter. And considering I was moved up, I don't have great knowledge of how dust works Deku said. I see. So did you have trouble understanding dust? If that's so I don't mind teaching, you. It's nothing to be ashamed about Penny said. I'm not ashamed about it, but I don't want to trouble you Deku said. No need to worry Aizuku. I'll be more than happy to teach and answer any inquiries about dust applications Penny said. Thanks Penny. You're a really good friend Deku said. Thanks Penny said, whilst blushing. And I know just the place to start Deku said. Deku pulled a chest from under the bed and pulled out a dust notebook that the school had provided. Can you write down the basic applications of dust for me Deku asked. Sure, I can. I'll have them done by morning Penny said. Um, sister. We still have school if you remember. You need your sleep Evelyn said. Oh, um, right Penny said. Don't worry Penny our first lesson is on Thursday. You have plenty of time. So what have you two been up to Deku asked. Chatted with some people and got to know the local legends. Apparently, shortly before we joined, Team RWBY had the biggest food fight in the history of Beacon Evelyn said. Oh wow. Glad we weren't here for that. What it among themselves Deku asked. Against another first year team Evelyn said. I've been with Ruby this whole afternoon. I had fun Penny said. Good for you Deku said. Dinner is ready Jack called. You better have not done anything to it Evelyn said. No, I haven't carrots. Same as the last nine times you told me not to Jack said. Good. I don't trust you with any food Evelyn said, as she then entered the kitchen. The four then ate, and left some food for David. Evelyn and Penny left the kitchen to hang out in the bedroom. Jack stayed sat in her chair and joined her hands together. So what's bothering you Deku asked. Nothing really. I just need some time to think and refocus myself Jack said. I see. Then I'll leave you alone Deku said. Really? You're not gonna ask why Jack asked. No I wouldn't say we are close enough yet to be unloading each other's baggage on each other Deku said. Hey. I suppose so, but all it really was, was something that threw me for a loop Jack said. Well. I hope you can sort out whatever threw you for a loop Deku said. Thanks Jack said. Deku then joined Penny and Evelyn in the bedroom. Some time later David returned and went into the kitchen to eat. Okay, Penny. I'll teach you how to tie a tie now Deku said. Thanks, Aizuku Penny said. Deku then taught Penny how to do a tie. Thank you Aizuku Penny said. No problem, but why did you want to learn Deku asked. I just want to help David as much as possible Penny said. You make it sound like David is a pet that you love and don't want to see hurt Deku said. Well. I don't want to see David hurt Penny said blushing. 
I'd say you're doing a bang up job already Penny. You will make a fine wife Evelyn teased. This caused Penny to blush profusely. I think you broke her Deku said. Whoops Evelyn said. Tuesday. Day 2. Shoot, there are no neighboring seats left David said. Well, if someone hadn't taken so much time in the bathroom Jack said. You try drying two giant furry ears quickly without hurting yourself Evelyn said. Let's just each find a seat Deku said. See you after class Penny said. The group then split off to find free seats. Oh, hello Blake. Why aren't you sitting with your team Deku asked. Good morning. It's Ajuku right Blake asked. Yeah, Ajuku Midori Adeku said. Weiss has been trying to give us fashion advice for the last 24 hours Blake said. I think I know the reason why, but I think he's dealing with the consequences Deku said, look over to David who was sitting with the rest of team RWBY. Never mind that. So, history of remnant. What's the professor like? Please tell me he's not like Port Deku said. Professor Oblek. He's wise and knowledgeable. And he isn't like Port, but he's a tad Blake said. A good morning to you all. Students. I hope you had an eventful break and that you've come back to the academy well rested and ready to tackle the well of knowledge that the teachers at Beacon are willing and prepared to impart you. The Blake said. Eccentric Blake said. I see Deku said. It's alright. He slows down for the important parts Blake said. But by how much Deku asked. Today children we will be reviewing the history of prehistoric remnant and their approach to survival Oblek said. Not by much Deku said. I think it's best you start taking notes Blake said. Already on it Deku said. Oblek then began his lesson. His fast talking meant there wasn't a moment for Deku to rest. It's almost over. Try to resist Blake said. I have a high pain tolerance and he's managed to nearly make my hand fall off Deku said. So, taking into account what we've discussed so far, what knowledge can we surmise about the Grimm? Despite all having to deal with the Grimm in antiquity, the only thing these ancient tribes had in common was that they avoided foraging at night. A tribe harassed by Boelves would cover themselves in mud before heading out. Others who lived in an Appel's territory learned to carry phosphorus. What do these habits that had become laws among these gatherings of humans and faunas tell us about the Grim Black asked. Are Grim by any chance more like their animal counterparts than one would think David asked. Precisely, young man. Very well put indeed Black said. Nice job David Deku said. Grim are creatures of darkness and nightmares, and they take the shape of things that scared our ancestors and hunted their dreams. No one knows the reason for this but this fact gives every species of Grimm different characteristics. Rules, we could say, they abide by. You won't see aquatic Grimm on the land, for example. Only winged Grimms can fly, with few exceptions. Appel, having a bat's eyesight, are very sensitive to bright lights. And hiding your scent aids in escaping a Boelf's notice. Now, you may be thinking that as hunters, this is useless knowledge to you, but if you ever happen to be out in the field, without aura, without dust, without weapons, your knowledge and your wits will be the only things left between you and an untimely demise Oblek said. Deku wrote what Oblek said down in his history notebook. And that's all the time we have today children. Our first week will be mostly reviewing but we will get into new material next week. Have a nice day Oblek said. The Black then left the classroom as quickly as he entered. He is a good professor, even if he causes his students to develop carpal tunnel Deku said. I just wish he didn't get so hard to follow at times Blake said. Probably should start recording his lessons and then play them back at half speed Deku said. That's a great idea. I'm stealing that Blake said. Deku and Blake then left the classroom. Deku was now in the library reading some history books. He then heard footsteps approaching him. 
Oh, hello again Blake Deku said. Hey, Aizuku. Doing some reading on history Blake asked. Yeah. Got to catch up on what was missed in the first semester. Thank God Blake gave the list of books with the relevant history Deku said. Yeah. I would always have to come here to understand what he was talking about. But never again. Now I have more time for my own reading Blake said. What kind of books do you read Deku asked. Oh, um. Fiction books. Yeah, fiction books Blake said with a blush. So, you like to read for fun Deku asked. Yeah. It also helps clear my mind Blake said. I see. What's the name of the book you are reading Deku asked. Blake blushed profusely and then ran away. Um. Okay. By Blake Deku said. Deku continued to read until it was close to the library's closing time. Deku began to put the books back where he found them. As he did, he saw Blake in a corner. Deku was able to see over Blake's shoulder and saw an image in the book. He immediately bushed and looked away. Oh, yeah. Shove that big katana into her sheath Blake said. Deku decided to leave before he could hear any more. I don't have a problem with people reading that stuff. But why in a library Deku thought. Deku then left the library and headed for Glinda's room. Little did he know that Blake left the library soon after and saw he wasn't going to the first year dorms and decided to follow. Blake saw Deku enter Glinda's room and her mind went straight to something from her books. What is he doing in Glinda's room? He can't possibly be. But what if he is? No Blake no. Aizuku isn't like that get your mind out of the litter box Blake said. Wednesday. Day 3. Yes. We managed to arrive in time to get seats, today Evelyn said. Considering our first class is combat, I don't think we'll be doing too much sitting around Jack said. Penny, remind me again who's the professor in charge of this class David asked. Oh, it's actually an acquaintance we've already made Penny said. Glinda then enters the classroom. Good morning, children. I hope you've enjoyed your break because that's the last extended one you'll get for a long time. I also hope you haven't slacked off too much. Before we begin, I wanted to inform you that we have a new team of students among the first years. You may have already met them, but I'd like to make a formal introduction. Meet Jacqueline B. Ivory, Penny Polendana, David D. I. K. Begis, Ajuku Midoriya and Evelyn Damarot, making up Team Jadi. Led by Miss Ivory Glinda said. A. A team of five. And there's Noah or D. Did I miss them a girl asked. No, Nora. You didn't miss the A or D. There's Noah or D a boy said. Now you may have noticed that they are a team of five. This is due to special circumstances, and the same goes for their late induction. Now, to rectify what I said earlier. Formal introductions are all well and good, but Glinda said. She then looked at Deku. This being combat class, I think a better introduction would be served by making Team Jadi take the floor. Mr. Midoriya, if you would please come down Glinda said. Yes, Miss Goodwitch Deku said. Break a leg, Aizuku Jack said. I've broken enough bones in my body so, no Deku said. Go on Deku, represent Team Jadi Evelyn said. Put on a good show to show what we can do Penny said. Don't put the bar too high David said. Deku then walked down to Glinda. Now, for your opponent. Miss Zaya Long Glinda said. All right. Finally, back in action. I get to pop your sparring, Cherry, Greeny. You should feel honored, Young said. Noticing the pun, Deku decided to try and pun back. I have experience in smashing people, Deku said. Deku could hear Weiss groan. Home, I see you like it rough. I like that in a man, Young said. Hopefully not too rough. I don't break my arm. That would be as I a long recovery time Deku said. Oh, man. 
How come I never thought of that? I see you are an expert with your mouth Young said. Not really, this is my first time using my mouth. And that's as far as I'm taking it Deku said. There's two of them. All is lost Ruby said. Fine. We can go back to vanilla Young said. If you two are quite finished Young said. Show my how good you are with your body. This is gonna be fun Young said. She gets into a fighting stance. Deku gets into his fighting stance and activates one for all covering his body in green electricity. On my mark Glinda said. Don't hold back Greeny Young said. Begin Glinda said. Before Young could act Deku started to bounce rapidly off the walls. Oh wow. He's fast Ruby said. He is, and he's faster than you Wise said. No way. Ruby Rose is always the fastest Ruby said. I don't think you hold that title anymore Blake said. That is true. Ajuku has shown to travel at faster speeds that you Ruby Penny said. Penny. You are supposed to be on my side Ruby said. But we are different teams. How can she be on your side, when her teammate Blitz is around young Evelyn said. No way. Young will beat him. He may be fast, but Young is really strong Ruby said. Hate to burst your bubble again, but Ajuku is also really strong Jack said. Well, ah, uh, Young has range on her side Ruby asked. Only if she can hit him Blake said. Stay still Greeny Young shouted, firing off bullets to place where Deku was only a few moments ago. And, um, Deku does have ranged attacks David said. Really? but I don't see anything that could fire any projectiles Wise said. That's because he can fire air bullets David said. Eh. Bullets we is asked. Don't ask us. We don't know how he does it. All we know is that he fights with arms and legs. We don't even know his semblance David said. Well whatever semblance it is. It must be overpowered Blake said. Why do you think that Penny asked? Because his aura hasn't gone down Blake said. The others looked to see that Deku's aura had not dropped at all. Deku had been bouncing around the arena and going in for hits. But these hits were random in their timing and where he would strike. Deku went into to punch Young, but she was able to grab him. Got you now Young said. Young then pulled her fist back and punched Deku hard sending him to the other side of the arena. Young then fired a volley of bullets at Deku. Deku retaliated with his own air bullets. Get him Young Ruby shouted. Kick her cake in Evelyn said. As the bullets got closer Deku used 20% of one for all and kicked the ground, causing a piece to pop up and block the bullets. After doing so he looked at his aura level, using 20% didn't use that much aura. Meanwhile Young took all of the air bullets. Time to end this Young said. Young then slammed her fists together and her hair lit on fire. One for all, 20% Deku said, increasing to 20% throughout his body, and causing his aura it starts depleting. Deku the charged at Young. Deku swung his right leg at Young. She met Deku's kick with her own punch. The attacks collided and created a blast of wind pressure that spread throughout the arena. The two were in a stalemate until Young threw at Deku sending him flying up to the ceiling. Deku bounced off the ceiling and crashed into Young and created a dust cloud. As the smoke cleared Young and Deku could be seen breathing heavily and sweating profusely. Deku had pinned Young under him. They were in a compromising position. Young's left leg was up by her head being held down by Deku's right arm, whilst her right leg was straight and held down by Deku's left leg. Deku's left hand was holding Young's right and his right leg pinned down Young's right arm. So, you like to be on top Young said. Miss Xiaolong is restrained. The winner is Ajuku Midori Aglinda announced. Deku then got off Young and offered his hand. Thanks. That was fun Young said. It was a great match. You really pack a punch Deku said. 
I should start calling your horse, with those powerful kicks you have Young said. Now for the next match. Mr. Dik Begis vs Mr. Blue Glinda said. Young and Deku left the arena passing David and his opponent. Good luck Deku said. Thanks. I need it David said. Young and Deku then joined the others. Evelyn ran up and jumped at Deku pushing her breast into Deku face. That was amazing Deku. You kicked Young's ass and made her yours Evelyn said. No, I did not Deku said. Oh, man. Dumping me already. Are you that bored of me Young asked. Nope. Nope 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 Deku said embarrassed. Ignoring Yang's advances. I have many questions about your semblance. Like how on Remnant does it not deplete your aura? At least at the start of the match Wise asked. We is. It's kind of rude to ask for his semblance. We haven't even known him for a week Blake said. It's fine Blake. What my semblance does is kind of obvious Deku said. But still, we shouldn't be giving away how our semblance works and what it can do Jack said. Don't worry. I still have a few tricks up my sleeves. My semblance is a power up. It increases my physical attributes like speed and strength Deku said. That's all well and good but why wasn't your aura drained at the start of the match Wise asked. My semblance also improves my aura regeneration. So, my aura won't go down from use unless I go past my comfortable limit Deku said. Limit. Is this about the overuse you talked about Evelyn asked. Yes. My semblance can cause extensive bodily harm if I use 100% right now Deku said. So what percentage were you fighting me at Young asked. 8%, but that big clash was at 20% Deku said. Damn. I'm kind of glad that you weren't going all out. I got kind of mad when you said you were holding back, but now. Thank gods Young said. That's the match Mr. Dik Begis Aura has entered the red. For the next matchup, Miss Polendener and Mr. Winchester Glinda said. You did well David Evelyn said. Not really. I could tell he was holding back David said. Well, you can't learn to fight if other defeat you in one hit Deku said. True, we are in a school after all David said. You'll get the hang of it Jack said. The team now looked to watch Penny's match. She defeated Winchester with ease. Then Evelyn and Jack were called for their respective matches. Combat class had ended and Deku was walking to the mess hall when. Hey, Ajuku, can we talk for a bit Ruby asked. Oh, sure Deku said signaling the others to continue on. What do you need Deku asked. Nothing I need per se. I just want to have a look at your gauntlets and boots. How do they work? I've never seen a weapon made from fabric, most weapons use metals. How did you make them Ruby asked. To tell the truth. I didn't make my gear Deku said. Wait really? But hunters always make their own weapons Ruby asked. Really? I didn't know. We do things kind of differently where I'm from. Some of us do make their own weapons, but others get their weapons made by a support student Deku said. Support student? What is that Ruby asked? They are students who make weapons and other things. The reason we have them is so that while hunters rest, their weapons can be looked over and fixed. It also allows them to make their own weapons and gear and then sell them. All of this happened due to our remote location Deku said. That. Actually, makes a lot of sense, but I would never let anyone near my crescent rose Ruby said. That's fair. It is your baby Deku said. Crescent rose is everything to me. But how are you going to fix and keep your weapons working Ruby asked. That's a good question Deku said. Deku thought about it for a bit and then came up with an idea. Well, maybe you could help me with that Deku said. I am not becoming your weapon mechanic Ruby angrily said. No not that. I was wondering if you would help me create a blueprint for them. 
That way we'll both know how they work. Oh. That's much better. Call me when you have free time Ruby said as she then headed for the mess hall. Um. Ruby, we need to exchange scroll numbers Deku said. Oh, right. Ruby said embarrassed. The two then exchanged scroll numbers and went to the mess hall. Deku had decided to go to the gym. As he entered, he saw Young and the ginger girl he saw here before. Young was only wearing her sport shorts and a yellow piece of cloth across her breast. The ginger was wearing the wearing the same outfit as before. Oh, hey Aizuku come here to get all hot and sweaty Young asked. Evelyn already made that joke Deku said. Oh shoot. Guess I should get some more materials. Mind helping me in that greeny Young asked. Sorry, but no. After last time I'm not joking anymore Deku said. Ah come on. I'll leave out the sexual ones this time Young said. So who's your friend Deku asked. Nora Valkyrie. Ready to smash stuff and break legs Nora said. Please don't break my legs Deku said. I won't. Unless you get on my bad side Nora said. It's nice to meet you Nora Aizuku said. Same here. But I must ask, why in your team's name there's a or second D Nora asked. I guess for the A it's that our team's name spells an actual color, otherwise we would be team JPDDE. For the second D. That's from my nickname Deku. It has sort of replaced my name for some Deku said. I see. Seems a bit weird Nora said. Weirder than joining halfway through the year Young asked. Fair point. But seeing how strong he is it makes sense. He kicked your ass and took second place Nora said. Thanks for reminding me. It's not like it only happened a few hours ago Young and really said. No hard feelings about that Deku asked. Of course not. I may get angry at times, but I won't hurt you. You beat me fair and square Young said. Oh good. A friend in my village didn't like to lose and would get very made if he did Deku said. That guy sounds like an asshole Nora said. He may seem so, but that's just the way he is. He won't accept anything, but absolute victory and he'll never stop until he achieves that, even if he's significantly injured Deku said. So, he's an arrogant asshole Nora said. It's just his way Deku said. So Aizuku. Wanna train with us Young asked. Sure Deku said. Alright. Legs get to work. Drop and give me 100 push ups and then we'll move to a 100 sit ups Nora said. Um, no. I'm not trying to make my hair fall out Young said. And overdoing it will have the opposite effect. I have personal experience Deku said. The three then began to train. During their training Deku would stare at Nora and Young at some times, and they did the same. Okay. That's enough for me today. I'll see you guys later Deku said. See ya Greeny. Oh yeah. By the way if you want to spar then meet me in the classroom arena during the week. And hit me up on the weekend, so we can use the amphitheater Young said. Sure thing Young Deku said. By Deku Nora said. Deku then left the gym. You were checking him out weren't you Young said. So were you. You wouldn't expect him to be so ripped whilst having that cute face Nora said. He was also checking us out. He must like our assets Young said. Who wouldn't though Nora said. The two girl laughed. All right back to it Young said. Thursday. Day 4. Team Jaddy were forced to split up. David had forgot his tie and only noticed it on the way to class. Deku quickly ran back to the dorm room to grab it, but they were still too late. If we keep doing this. We're going to be acquainted with the entire school by the end of the semester Evelyn said. I can think of worse outcomes. See you after class David said. David and Deku find two spot next to Weiss. Are these seats taken, Weiss Deku asked. Oh, Aizuku. David. 
Good morning. They are free you can sit wise said. Much obliged David said. I noticed your team always gets to class quite. Tardily. Got a heavy sleeper on the team wise asked. Not that I know. It's just been random chance so far, really. Today I forgot my tie, another day someone. Well, it's something else. Don't plan to make a habit of it, though David said. Glad to hear that Wise said. Speaking of sitting disposition, why are you not with your team Deku asked. I'm ashamed to admit that sitting close to Ruby causes me to lose focus easily. At least for dust class, I prefer being apart from her Wise said. Ah. I can see that happening. Ruby is very. Energetic David said. We'll try not to disturb you, then Deku said. Much obliged Wise said. This is. So unfair. I mean, that other guy who hit on her in the library. He, I could understand. He looks cool and actually put some effort into his first contact a blonde boy said. Yes, John a black haired boy said. But this one. This one wasn't even trying to hit on her. He wasn't trying to flirt, he wasn't trying to court. Or was he, Ren Zhang asked. No he wasn't, Zhang Ren said. Right. And he even got on her bad side within 30 seconds of meeting her or something but now they are all chummy Zhang said. Maybe they are just being polite to each other Ren suggested. By the way, I heard from Ruby about your condition. Dreadful, really Wise said. Oh, it's no big deal. I'd just like to catch up with everyone else as soon as possible to be more help to my team, though David said. That's admirable. If you'd like, I could show you my notes for dust class from the previous semester Wise said. Really? I wouldn't want to impose David said. Oh, nonsense. It'd be a pleasure, really Wise said. Mind if I join you too? Don't really know that much about dust myself Deku said. Really Wise asked. Yeah. Penny gave me the basics, but I still need to learn more Deku said. Sure. I would be happy to teach you Wies said. Now look at the green one Jan said. Jan, the teacher arrived Ren said. What am I doing wrong man Jan asked. Dust class then started. So when's our first lesson? Teacher Wise David said. Stop. Just call me when you want to learn. I'll be around the dormitory. Now hold out your scrolls Wise said. Wise then passed her scroll over Deku's and David's. There. That's my scroll number Wise said. Oh, come on Jan shouted. Wise. David and Deku then left the classroom. Deku had decided to call Rias to ask about her dust lessons. Good afternoon, Ajuku Rias said. Hey, Wise. Hope I'm not disturbing you Deku said. Not at all. I guess this is about my notes Wise asked. Yup. Is it a good time Deku asked. Certainly. Come to my team's room Wise said. Deku then made his way to Team RWBY's dorm room. Come right in. I've already picked a subject Wise said. We're not doing it in chronological order Deku asked. Hmm, you would think so. But I think we should prioritize on things you can understand without previous knowledge which also ties into the current curriculum Wise said. Well, you're the expert Deku said. Deku and Wise then started to go over dust. I have to be going. Thank you very much Wise Deku said. It was no trouble. We actually got through quite a lot this evening. You have no idea how delightful spending time with someone who takes studying seriously is Wise said. Thanks for the compliment. Now all I need is practical practice Deku said. If you are okay with it. I would be happy to show you how to Wise said. Thanks Wise. You have been a big help Deku said. Thank you. Call me when you are free Rias said. Okay. See you later Wise Deku said. 
by Aizuku we is said. Friday. Day 5. Aura class. Now this should be exciting David said. You look very interested, David Penny said. I don't look. I am very interested David said. The professor wants us to form pairs, but Jack asked. We'll just be a three. Nothing we can really do about it Deku said. Actually. Why don't you team up with me today, almighty leader? I don't think we've trained together since. Vacuo, right. Well. I don't mind if you don't Jack said. Cool. You will be joining us cute face. See you later, guys Evelyn said. Evelyn then grabbed Deku's hand and quickly dragged him away. Um, Evelyn, I'm all for training with you, but why are you in such a hurry to drag me away from Penny and David Deku asked. Just want to give them some time together Evelyn said. She then turned her head and winked at Penny. Alright let's get to training Jack said. The professor tells them to kneel in front of each other. The exercise consists in focusing aura in certain parts of the body, matching what your partner is doing with their own aura. Couldn't have Penny just asked to be David's partner Deku said. I wouldn't have been opposed to it Jack said. Well, you know how Penny is, she thinks partners should spend as much time as possible together Evelyn said. As much as I like David I don't want to spend every waking moment with him Jack said. You try telling that to her and her logical brain. So, I took the initiative, and now they are spending some quality time Evelyn said. Does Penny have a crush on David Deku asked. Hum don't really know. She shows signs, but it could be that he's the first boy she's made friends with Evelyn said. And from what you have told me, she cares about him very much Jack asked. Speaking of love, got anyone back home Evelyn asked. I have people I love and care for, but no one specific person to care for Deku said. So, you are on the market. You better watch out Evelyn teased licking her lips. What does that mean Deku asked. Well, you are cute, smart and strong. Sooner or later, you'll have someone to love. Who knows, it may even be one of us. Penny may fall in love with your smart and logical thinking Evelyn said. Enough about love. Let's get back to the exercise Jack said. Moo. Way to ruin my fun Evelyn said. You can tease them later Jack said. After completing more aura exercises the lesson ended. Deku was walking past the amphitheater, when he heard the sound of fighting come from the room. He decided to have a look. As he looked inside, he saw two students fighting. One of them was wise and she was fighting the crimson-haired girl Deku saw on Monday. All of a sudden, the girl disarmed Weiss and sent Weiss weapon at Deku. Luckily, he was able to catch it. That was close Deku said. Aizuku. What are you doing here Weiss asked. I heard fighting and wanted to have a look. Though I did not think that I would almost become a kebab Deku said. Sorry. I should have had a better grip on my weapon Weiss said. It's alright. So, care to introduce me to your friend Deku asked, as he threw the rapier back. Right. This is Pyrrha Nikos. She is the best fighter in Beacon Weiss said. Hello Pyrrha said. So, you're the girl David and Penny nearly got into detention Deku said. Well. Me and Nora were also partly to blame. But it's no problem at all. It's no big deal if I get detention Pyrrha said. But it is wise said. So are you some kind of celebrity Deku asked. What are you talking about? I'm really not that big of a deal Pyrrha said. So, you are a big deal Deku said. Of course, she is how do you await? Your village had poor communications wise said. Yes. I am a big deal. But I don't like going around showing it of Pyrrha said. That's fair. Some people just want to be normal sometimes Deku said. Thanks for understanding Pyrrha said. I'll leave you to it Deku said. Actually. 
You can stay if you want. The more the merrier they say Pira said. Um, sure. You okay with his wise Deku asked. Yeah sure. Your match with Young has shown you are more than capable wise said. Thanks Deku said. By the way. I may want to be normal, but that doesn't mean I'll be giving over my spot Pira said. Good. I like a challenge. And from the way you said how you're not a big deal. I don't think anyone would believe me if I told them I beat Pira Nikos. Even in front of a crowd Deku said. That's. A fair assumption Pira said. The three then began to train together in all things form combat to aura manipulation, until the sun fell. Deku was now returning for Glinda's room. He had now finished Glinda's crash course on Remnant and now had his evenings free. As he entered the dorm room the others looked at him. Um, why are you all staring at me Deku asked. You should know why Jack said. I literally don't know what you are talking about Deku said. We heard from Young that you were going to Glinda's room every night, for some fun Penny said. It hasn't even been a week and you are already with the hottest teacher. Well done Evelyn said. No. No you got it all wrong Deku said. So, you haven't been going to Glinda's room David asked. Well, I have been going to Glinda's room, but not for those reasons Deku said. Then what are you two doing? Young told us that Blake Penny said. The door then flung open. Standing in the doorway was Blake who was out of breath. Careful Blake. You nearly broke our door off Evelyn said. Sorry, but Young has told a lie Blake said. What the other said. I told my team what I saw. I saw Aizuku go into Glinda's room. I have only now learned that Young spun that into what she told you Blake said. So Aizuku isn't having sex with Glinda David asked. No. Of course, I'm not. She was giving me some lessons because I asked as I was moved up a few years Deku said. Oh, sorry Aizuku Jack said. Hey, Aizuku can I talk with you Blake asked. Sure Deku said. Deku and Blake then left the dorm room. I'm so sorry for what happened. I shouldn't have followed you and told Young. I was just curious Blake said. Wait you followed me Deku asked. Yeah. When I saw you leave, I got curious why you were heading for the teacher's rooms. I'll do anything to make it up to you Blake said. Blake. It's fine. You didn't cause this. It was young, if you want to make it up to me. Then do what you want to young Deku said. I was going to do that anyways, and I believe Weiss is doing so already Blake said. Well, then. I wish you a good night Deku said. Night Aizuku Blake said. Blake then started to walk back to her dorm room. Hey Blake, why don't we do some reading sometime Deku said. Oh, um, sure Blake said. Though preferably not books with big katanas Deku said. Blake blushed heavily. Um, um, yeah. We'll get a book to read together Blake said, before she dashed off. Saturday. Day 6. It was now their first weekend after joining Beacon. Deku had decided that he would rest on the weekend, but he still go up early, compared to the others. Good morning girls, Deku David said. Morning David Deku said. Did you sleep well Jack asked. He has Penny said. Ha, huh, you're pretty certain Jack said. David presents good complexion. His tossing was at a minimum and there are no signs of sleep deprivation on his face. I'm 95% certain that he's enjoyed a good night's sleep Penny said. Well, what about Evelyn David asked. Completely ignoring Penny's statement about his sleep. Jack laughs and points at Evelyn's bed where a figure still lays asleep, breathing softly, a long rabbit ear twitching cutely. I see. Well, what should we do today David asked. Home, honestly, I think I will probably study. We have a lot of stuff to catch up on Jack said. I would like to keep you company, David, 
but Saturday is the day of my weekly checkup, as agreed upon with the general, Penny said. Don't worry about me, Penny. Your health is much more important, David said. Yes. I will, Penny said. Hey, if you really don't know what to do you're more than welcome to study with me Jack said. Sounds like a good option. Thanks partner David said. I might join you from time to time Deku said. You are welcomed anytime Jack said. You could see what one of our other friends are doing. Maybe they'd like to hang out Penny said. That's true David said. David had decided to give Ruby the cookies he bought her, as payment for his weapon. So, what are you going to do Aizuku Penny asked. Weiss offered to help me use dust. So I'm gonna ask if she's free to do so Deku said. Okay. Have fun Penny said as she left for her checkup. Deku then pulled out his scroll and called Weiss. Hello Aizuku. You asking about my offer Weiss asked. Good morning, Weiss, and yeah, is this a good time Deku asked. Any time is a good time, if it's with you. Meet me at my room Weiss said. Okay. See you soon Deku said. Deku then left his room and headed for Team RWB Weiss dorm room. Weiss was waiting outside of her room next to two briefcases. Hello Weiss. Is that the dust Deku said, gestating to the briefcases. Hi Aizuku, and yes, the dust is inside. These briefcases hold every kind of dust available we is said. Shall we get going Deku asked. Of course. We have the amphitheater all day. Mind giving me a hand, these cases are heavy Weiss said. Sure Deku said. Deku and Weiss then each picked up a briefcase. Though Weiss was struggling to carry it. You sure you will be able to carry it all the way there Deku asked. No. Sorry for making you carry them both Weiss said, as she put the briefcase down. It's no problem. Actually, these are quite light compared to what I've lifted before Deku said. How much have you lifted Weiss asked. 255 kilograms, and that was without aura or my semblance Deku said. Oh my gods, you are really strong. I don't think I could even lift a tenth of that Weiss said. Well. You boy isn't built for lifting Deku said. You calling me weak Weiss asked. No no no. You are by no means weak. It's just that your body is built for you fighting style. You use quick strikes and ranged attacks. If you fought like young, you would have more muscle, but your body is slim and light, perfect for your fighting style Deku said. Thanks Aizuku Weiss said blushing. The two then made their way to the amphitheater and set up. So which dust type do you want to start with Weiss asked. What would you recommend Deku asked. Any of the four main types of dust, being fire, air, water and earth. They are usually the ones people start training with Weiss said. Let's start with fire dust then Deku said. Okay. Now there are two main forms dust comes in, crystals and powder, but they are activated in the same way. The powder is what I use in Mertonaster. It's in a container that will drain the more I use that dust. Now the crystals, they usually come in these shapes and can be held and used without any special equipment. The way to activate them is to channel your aura into it to activate it and make it do what you want, or you could break it or crack it to make it explode, or for it to be absorbed Wise said. Like David's weapon Deku said. Now since you don't have any dust ready weapons, we'll be using the crystals. The crystals can produce many blasts on one big blast depending on how much aura you channel into it. And once the crystal is all used up. It will go black, and the crystal will crumble and disintegrate we is said. Okay. Let's get practicing Deku said. I like that attitude Wise said. Weiss then picked up a fire dust crystal and gave it to Deku. Now, it only takes a little bit of aura to activate the dust. So channel as little as possible to create a small flame and then fire it at the dummies Weiss said. Okay Deku said. 
Deku closed his eyes and began to focus his aura into the crystal. Remember, relax. You just want a small flame wise said grabbing onto Deku's shoulder. A small flame the appeared at the tip of the crystal. That's it. Now. Ah. Ah. A Chu wise loudly sneezed. This caused Deku to lose focus and focus a lot of aura into the crystal, which caused the crystal to explode. The smoke cleared and showed that Deku was on top of Weiss, and they were covered in soot. Sorry Deku said getting off Weiss, and extend his hand towards her. It's fine. Not the first time this has happened Weiss said taking Deku's hand. Really Deku asked. On my first day here. Ruby knocked over my suitcases and I got made at her and shook powered dust in her face. She then sneezed causing it to explode. Though this time it was my sneeze wise laughed. It's not the first time I've been blown up as well. Should we go and wash up Deku asked. No. That would waste the time we have here and better to wash up after we're done wise said. Okay. Let's try this again, without the sneeze Deku said. Please forget that wise said embarrassed. The two returned to dust training. Thankfully without any more incidents. After finishing they hit the showers to wash up and headed back to the dorm rooms. Thanks for teaching me wise Deku said. It was my pleasure. I wish my team took studying and practice as seriously as you do wise said. The door then opened and showed the other members of team RWBY. I'm sure they do take it seriously, but they just want to have fun. We won't be children forever Deku said. I guess so, but still they could be a little more wise said. A little more what Young said. Oh, I'm um, wise said. Goodbye wise Deku said. Don't leave me wise shouted. So, what were you going to say Blake asked. Nothing wise said. As team leader I demand you to tell us Ruby said. Please come back Ijuku Weiss shouted. Sunday. Day 7. Deku was in team Jaddy's dorm room kitchen. He had just finished making his breakfast and was about to sit down when he heard a commotion coming from the main room. Deku opened the door and saw Evelyn blocking Jack from entering the kitchen. For the last time, you're not cooking breakfast Evelyn shouted. Carrots, get away from that door or I swear I'll sort you Jack shouted. Listen, if you were just cooking for yourself, I wouldn't mind. But I won't let you poison David Evelyn shouted. I just want to make him something to thank him for. Why am I even discussing this with you? Get out of the way, already Jack shouted. Could the both of you please calm down Penny asked. Okay 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 time out. Already David shouted getting their attention. Thank you. Now, first of all, good morning. Second, are you seriously physically barring Jack's access to the kitchen, Evelyn David asked. Well, yes, but... Wait what smells so good Evelyn asked. Then sniffed the air and turned towards Deku. He waved at them as his mouth was full. What is that? It smells good Jack said. Deku raised his hand and then swallowed. It's called katsudon. It's my favorite meal. You wanna try some Deku asked. Sure Evelyn said. Deku used his chopsticks to pick up a piece of katsudon and presented it to Evelyn. She looked at it and then to Deku and then back. She opened her mouth and ate the katsudon in one go. Deku then picked up another piece and ate it. How does it taste David asked. It's good. Very good Evelyn said. What's it made from Penny asked. It's made from rice, pork cutlets, eggs, and other ingredients. I can teach you the recipe if you want Deku said. I would like that Penny said. Now. Evelyn why are you blocking Jack from the kitchen Deku asked. I'm doing it to protect David Evelyn said. Holy hell, Evelyn. I need protection from food now David asked. No you bloody don't Jack said. Yes he does Evelyn said. 
Can we just be the judge of that? Penny asked. Capital idea, Penny. I support that motion, David said. And I'm sure the other residents do too, Deku said. You can't be serious. You actually want to try her cooking? Evelyn asked. If having a third opinion will stop this. Yes, David said. Ah. In your face, Carrots Jack said. Then I'm cooking too, Evelyn said. What Jack said? A David said. You'll need something to wash out the taste of death after you're finished, Evelyn said. Oh, a cooking contest. What a nice idea, Penny said. Fine. You're on, Carrots. You, me, and the kitchen, Jack shouted. The rest of us will be the judges, Penny said. Don't say judges, there is no need to have any judging, is there, David said. Yes, there is, Jack and Evelyn shouted. The dish should be something you both know the recipe for and the pantry is stocked with ingredients for. What about we got into the kitchen to check and let David wash up and dress Penny said. Fine Jack said. Fine Evelyn said. So not fine David said. Jack, Evelyn and Penny then entered the kitchen. This is not what I had in mind David said. At least Evelyn has let Jack into the kitchen Deku said. Deku then entered the kitchen. So have you decided on what to make Deku asked. They are going to be making pancakes Penny said. You're going down carrots Jack shouted. Everyone will be going down after eating your pancakes Evelyn shouted. Down in bliss Jack said. Fuck off with that bullshit Evelyn said. Evelyn and Jack then began to argue, unleashing a flurry of curses at each other. Things seem to be off to a good start Deku said. Yes, it is Penny said. I was being sarcastic Penny Deku said. But things are going right. Soon this whole thing will be over Penny said. If you say so. Hey, I think you should spend less time arguing, and more time making Deku said. I can multitask, but Jack will need full concentration if she plans to make actually good food Evelyn shouted. Of course, you can. Your brain is all over the place Jack said. Enough with the insults. Are you two gonna start baking or am I gonna knock you two out Deku shouted. This sudden spout of anger got Evelyn and Jack to stop arguing, and they proceeded to start making pancakes. It wasn't long however before they started cursing at each other again, but at a much lower voice level. What are we gonna do Deku asked. Don't worry. By the end of the day this will be over Penny said. You seem pretty sure of that Deku said. That's because I'm 99% sure. Now let's leave them to it Penny said. Deku sighed as he and Penny left the kitchen. Jack's and Evely's profanity immediately increased as they left. David had now washed up and dressed. And was now waiting in the main room. So, how are things David asked. With Jack and Evelyn. Well Penny said. Hey. Watch your elbow, Carrots Jack said. Why don't you give me some more space, instead Evelyn said. Because I need the. Gar Jack said as she got hit by Evelyn batter. Are you doing this on purpose Jack asked. You're just too damn close. There's an entire kitchen, why do you have to? Hey Evelyn said as Jack threw batter at her. Maya, you. You oaf on stilts Evelyn said. What did you call me, carrot boobs Jack asked. Oh, it's on Evelyn shouted. Evelyn and Jack then began to throw batter at each other. Remember, if you waste all the batter you will both lose Deku said. It's going great. I feel they're really making some progress Penny said. In killing each other, you mean David asked. There's just a 0.001% chance of that happening. The most probable outcome of this that they finally express their grievances in full once and for all Penny said. Deku then went into the bathroom. What exactly are they making, anyway David asked. Pancakes Penny said. Um, Penny. We're. Kind of done Evelyn said. Fantastic Penny said. 
but we're in. Could you ask David and Ijuku to step outside on the balcony? We need to hit the bathroom, Jack said. Actually, Ijuku has entered the bathroom. So you are gonna have to wait, Penny said. Deku then exited the bathroom with a small towel. Never mind, David said. Deku then entered the kitchen. The kitchen was a mess, there was batter all over the place and all over Jack and Evelyn. Without a word Deku began to wipe Jack's face, and pick out clumps of batter from her hair. Look at the mess you two have made Deku said. Evelyn started it Jack said. No. You started it Evelyn said. I don't want to hear it Deku said, now moving to Evelyn. This mess is both of your faults Deku said. Sorry Jack said. Sorry Ijuku Evelyn said. Deku then grabbed Evelyn's ears and started to wipe the batter off, and dig out the batter in her ears. Now I hope you can sort this out. This feud is going to get us in trouble sooner or later Deku said. Evelyn and Jack remained silent. Now go wash up and change Deku said. Deku then left the kitchen and went on to the balcony with David. We've really upset him Evelyn said. What have we done Jack asked. What needed to happen. Though I did not expect Ijuku to have that reaction Penny said. None of us did. We need to make things right Jack said. Let's change in front of him Evelyn said. Evelyn. For fucks. No Jack. Calm down. Evelyn, we're not doing that Jack said. That's for the best. I believe Ijuku would freeze if you did that Penny said. I would beg to differ. He touched my ears without even asking. Very bold of him Evelyn said. He was cleaning you. You should be thankful Jack said. She should you. That's why we should do my idea Evelyn teased. Nope. I am not fighting you on this Jack said leaving the kitchen. Glad you agree. Let's get Deku and Evelyn teased. Jack sighed as she entered the bathroom. You wouldn't do that. Would you Penny asked. Maybe. His or David's reaction would be amazing. Passing out form my share sexiness Evelyn said. After Evelyn and Jack had washed up and got changed, Deku and David came back inside. There are three plates with two pancakes on them, one is Jack's the others is Evelyn's. Next to the plates were three glasses filled with milk. So, what am I testing first David asked. You can't know that, David. There's a small chance that knowing beforehand may influence your judging. And we'll drink in between tasting to cleanse our palate Penny said. Good thinking. We want my victory to be sure and your loss to be gracious after all, Carrots Jack said. In your dreams, Blondie. Let's get this started Evelyn said. One bite each from one pancake. The one bite of the other Penny said. Sounds like a plan Deku said. The three each took a place and a glass of milk and sat at separate tables. Deku cuts the pancake on top. He stabs the piece with his fork and bring it to his mouth. He bites down, the pancake tastes good. Deku looks to the other and see they have no negative reactions. It seems Evelyn was wrong about Jack's cooking Deku thought. Deku then grabs his glass of milk and proceeds to drink the milk. Deku cuts a piece off the bottom pancake and eats it. Though unlike before, this pancake tastes awful. I spoke too soon Deku thought. The pancake tastes like it should, but there is something that had given the pancake its horrible taste. Deku looks around and sees that David had the same reaction, though Penny doesn't seem to be affected, which is weird. Oh goodness, are you three alright Evelyn asked. Of course they are. My cooking is perfectly fine. So, who won Jack asked. Evelyn Penny said. And here I thought Evelyn was blunt Deku thought. What? What do you mean she won Jack asked. I'm 100% positive that David and Ijuku agree Penny said. That's. That's impossible Jack said. For the love of pancakes, Jack. 
are you really that deluded? I can't believe your tongue is that far gone, you have to know how bad your cooking is. Hyperbole to the side, it's really really bad Evelyn said. But. But it was my mother's recipe. It's my mother's cooking. My mother. My mother always made the best meals for me and my sister, and my dad. Everything she did always tasted wonderful Jack said. Are you sure you go the recipe right Deku asked. Yes. I always helped her in the kitchen, she taught me how to do so many things. And I follow her recipes to AT. So, even if they taste a little different. They can't be bad Jack said. They're not bad, Jack Penny said. But. But you said Jack said. They may have tasted bad, but that was it Deku said. Your pancakes were actually very well made David said. I'm confused Evelyn said. The thing is that. The looks, the texture, the cooking, they are all great. They feel like they are supposed to be good but David said. There's this overpowering, nauseating overtaste of. Of Deku said. Cinnamon. The pancakes were overly saturated with cinnamon Penny said. You mean I put too much cinnamon in my dishes and that's why they all come out tasting like crap Jack asked. I think so, yes Penny said. But. I'm sure I remember the quantities correctly Jack said. Jack. Your family was from Vacuo, wasn't it Evelyn asked. You know it was Jack said. I can't believe this. It was that simple Evelyn groaned. Evelyn then walked into the kitchen. She carefully makes her way through the kitchen and grabs a small bag. You can't be serious Evelyn shouted. Evelyn walks back into the room holding the small bag. Smell it Evelyn said. What Jack asked. Now I see Penny said. See what? What's going on David asked. Smell it. I know you never did Evelyn said. Jack then sniffs the contents of the bag. Ah. Carrots, what the hell? What did you put in my cinnamon Jack asked. That is your cinnamon. Mistrelli variety cinnamon Evelyn said. Mistrelli variety Jack questioned. There are two varieties of cinnamon in Remnant, the Mistrelli variety and the Vacuo variety. The first is more common in Mistral and Vale, while the latter is more common in Vacuo and Atlas Penny said. And the Mistrelli variety is about six times more powerful than the Vacuo one Evelyn said. Six times David asked. Are you? Are you serious? Bloody hell, no wonder whatever I cooked tasted like crap. I had been blasting the poor stuff with cinnamon Jack said. Can you realize all the bile we could have spared ourselves had I been less abrasive Evelyn groaned. Or had I been more. Prone to accept criticism Jack said. Hindsight is 2020 Deku said. You usually are Evelyn said. Not on family stuff, I'm not. And I'm sorry. That's not how a leader should act. Thank you Aizuku for making me realize that Jack said. It's okay. It's something you can work on and hey, I doubt we're ever going to find ourselves having to deal with your family matters on missions Evelyn said. You're right Jack laughed. Told you there was a high chance they would work this out Penny said. You did Deku said. We were lucky that the problem was so simple to solve David said. Even if the problem had been more complicated, I had the utmost confidence we could have worked through it together Penny said. Because we're a team David asked. Yes. I, I've never been in one so. I'd like to be good friends. And I'm sure they want it too. And so do you too, right Penny said. After that speech, it would be rude to say anything but yes, Penny David said. Hey Aizuku. I'm really sorry for making you mad Jack said. As a my Evelyn said. It's alright. I should have kept my cool Deku said. No. You had every right to get mad at us. We acted like children Evelyn said. We are your seniors. We should be the ones setting an example Jack said. 
Well, the best place to start anew is by clean up the kitchen Deku said. We'll get right on that Evelyn said. Evelyn the took off her blazer and started to undo her shirt. She had undone enough buttons to show her cleavage. Evelyn. What are you doing Deku asked. Getting undressed to clean. Can't get my school clothes dirty Evelyn said. But right here and now Deku asked. Oh, you want a private show? I'll be more than happy to oblige Evelyn teased. Deku blushed heavily. I'm... I'm going to get some food from the mess hall Deku said. I'm gonna join you. I'm still hungry David said. Deku and David then left the dorm room. Must you always do that Jack asked. Yes. But seriously. We have school tomorrow and I can't get this dirty. You better do the same Evelyn said. How have you managed to make sense while being sexual Jack asked. It's a gift. Now strip Evelyn said. I'm not doing that. What if they come back Jack asked. Don't worry Jack. I will protect you two from their eyes until you are done Penny said. Perfect Evelyn said. Evelyn then grabbed the bottom of Jack's blazer and shirt and pulled them up and off Jack. Soon Deku and David returned with food for everyone. Welcome back. Had a good breakfast, David Penny asked. Yeah. We also bought some food since we are now low on ingredients David said. Fantastic. Set them down in the kitchen. Evelyn, Jack have you finished cleaning and are you dressed? David and Ijuku have returned Penny said. We've finished cleaning, but are we dressed? Why don't you come and find out Evelyn said. We are. You two don't need to worry about seeing us undressed Jack said. Moo. Why can't you let me have my fun Evelyn asked. Deku, David and Penny then entered the kitchen. The kitchen was spotless, you wouldn't be able to tell that there was a food fight. Deku could even see his reflection on the floor. Jack was back in her uniform. Evelyn was too, but she wasn't wearing the blazer and had her shirt undone showing her cleavage once again. Nice job you two. You couldn't tell that you two had a food fight Deku said. We are your senior. We have to set a good example Jack said. Deku and Jack smiled at each other. Deku then saw the two bowls Evelyn and Jack used to mix their batter still had some left. Is this your batter, Evelyn Deku asked. Yep. Not overfilled with cinnamon Evelyn said. Deku then took the spoon and scoped a large clump of batter and ate it. What? There isn't enough for more pancakes, but there's still enough to eat Deku said. Hey. I want to eat my batter to Evelyn said. Evelyn then joined Deku in eating that batter. They quickly emptied the bowl of all the remaining batter. Evelyn then noticed that there was a piece of batter on Deku's cheek. Hold on you got Evelyn said, as she ate the batter straight from Deku's cheek, causing Deku to blush. Seeing this Penny took some batter from the other bowl and put it on her cheek. Penny. You got some on your David said. He then took his finger and wiped the batter away. Penny was a bit disappointed, but then realized. Blick. Fuck. I forgot about the cinnamon David shouted. I'm so sorry David Penny said. Jack, Deku and Evelyn laughed at the scene before them. Jack then grabbed a glass and filled it with water and then gave it to David to drink. Here Jack said. Thanks David said, as he took the glass and drank the water. Tried to pull and Evelyn. Didn't ya Jack whispered. Penny sadly nodded. Then I think you should ask Evelyn for help next time Jack said. Penny nodded and looked over to Evelyn and Deku, where Evelyn was pressing her breast against Deku's chest, which showed her white bra. Deku's face was completely red. He then fell back and landed on the ground with Evelyn landing on top of him. Deku went even redder. I want David to have that kind of reaction with me Penny said quietly. Monday. Day 8. And thus the day was one port said. 
Team Jaddy had survived another of Professor Port's lesson. Shall we go have lunch, David Penny asked. Oh, you know it David said. David then quickly gets up. Watch out Deku said. But it was too late, David had bumped into Blake making her drop her bag and caused the contents to fall out. Oh gods, Blake. Are you alright David asked. I'm fine. But you shouldn't get out of your seat so fast Blake said. I know. I'm so sorry. Here, let me help you David said. No. It's fine, really Blake said. Strewn across the floor were pencils, a handbook, a spare bow and... Fiction book. David reads the blurb and realizes it's a dirty book. Blake quickly picks up her things and quickly leaves. The team were now in the mess hall. And then she told me. Sorry, it's just I've never seen a rabbit faunus with mismatched ears, before Evelyn said. They are usually the same color as the hair, correct Penny asked. In my experience, yes Jack said. She could have asked permission before taking a picture, though Deku said. Oh, it was an innocent angle, so no big deal. And you gotta get used to attention when you're as attractive as we are, no Evelyn said. Hey, got to agree with you, Carrots Jack said. I'm not that attractive. Oh my Penny said. Just take the compliment, Penny. The bunny speaks the truth David said. The group shares a laugh, but then David gets distracted by his scroll. Penny, you have a nice figure and an adorable face. You are certainly attractive Evelyn said. Thanks. You're also very attractive Penny said. Of course, I am. I have the ass and tits for it. And my cute bunny ears add to my charm Evelyn said. Says you. If they got to know you, they'll realize you're a little devil Jack said. Jack then took a drink. I may be a little devil, but I won't tie them up and peg them like you Evelyn said. This made Jack spit out her drink all over Deku. Thanks Deku said. Sorry I Deku. Here Jack said, handing Deku her handkerchief. Deku wiped his face down of Jack's drink. On the other end I Deku is an angel Evelyn said. What Deku asked. Look at you. You are cute and kind. Any woman would fall in love. And your reactions, they make you more adorable than Penny Evelyn said. Deku blushed heavily. See what I mean Evelyn said. You should probably head back to the dorm without me David said. This about Blake's book Evelyn asked. How do you know David asked. Penny saw the title as it fell towards the ground. I have heard about the series before Jack said. My, my, David, exposing a maiden's most precious of secrets. I believe you're in for some punishment Evelyn said. Um, maybe I shouldn't have told them. Sorry Penny said. As long as we keep it between us, please. I don't know Blake that much so, for all I know, she could claw my eyes out David said. David then left the mess hall. Now, Ajuku. You weren't surprised when Penny told us. Care to explain Evelyn asked. So you know. I don't read those kind of books Deku said. Never said you did Evelyn said. I saw her reading it in the library Deku said. Ajuku. It's rude to spy on people Penny said. I didn't. I was putting books away when I saw her in the corner on a two-page picture I don't want to describe Deku said. Out in public. That was very bold of her Jack said. She probably couldn't get some alone time in her room Penny said. But why in the library Deku asked. Maybe she wanted someone to find out. Blackmail them into reading with her. She did scare David with her claws Evelyn said. Speaking of David, what do you find attractive about him Penny asked. I don't know how to put it into words. But I can say for certain that he is a ladies man Evelyn said. They then finished eating and then headed back to the dorm room. Deku was relaxing in team Jaddy's dorm room. 
He was on his bed reading a book. Hey Aizuku. Can we talk Evelyn asked. Sure. What is it Deku asked. Evelyn then climbed onto the bed and laid front down next to Aizuku. So, on Sunday, you cleaned me and Jack from the batter fight we had Evelyn said. Yeah. Oh, sorry was I a bit rough. I'm sure those ears are really sensitive Deku said. No no. You weren't rough at all, you were actually very gentle with my ears. I was surprised at that Evelyn said. Then what is it Deku asked? Well, it does involve my ears. The thing is that touching and fawn his ears or tail is considered to be a very intimate thing Evelyn said. I am so sorry. I didn't mean it like that Deku said, blushing heavily. It's alright Aizuku. I know you didn't mean it like that. David got very intimate with my ears Evelyn said. Really Deku asked. Yeah. He though my ears were fake, so I let him touch them, but he got a bit too into it Evelyn said. Okay thanks for telling me Deku said. Just remember that you can only touch my ears if you become my mating partner Evelyn said. Okay Deku said with a blush. You wanna touch them Evelyn asked. I'm. I'm gonna have a shower Deku said. Deku quickly got up from the bed and entered the bathroom. Ah. He's so cute when he's flustered. What should I do next? Climb into his bed. Let him my underwear, I mean he's already seen my bra and felt my breast. Or should I go simple and hug him in public? Yes, that's it that Evelyn said. What is David asked? Evelyn jumped and turned around to look at David. David, you nearly made me jump out of my clothes Evelyn said. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering what you were talking to yourself about David asked. It's nothing really Evelyn said. Oh, okay and why are you on my bed David said. I was just talking to Aizuku. He just entered the bathroom. Which reminds me, I need to tell you something Evelyn said. Tuesday. Day 9. Classes had ended for the day and Team Jaddy had just finished eating in the mess hall Jack, David and Evelyn had gone off leaving Deku and Penny alone in the mess hall. Aizuku, can I ask you a question Penny asked. You just did Deku said. Her Penny said. Never mind. What is it Deku asked. It's kind of a private question. I don't want to make you uncomfortable by asking Penny said. Well, I'll be the judge of that. So, ask away Deku said. You mention you had a lot of scars on our first day Penny said. Yes, I did. I told you to make you feel more comfortable about your next scar Deku said. Thanks for that. It made me feel a lot better Penny said. You're welcome, but you still haven't asked your question Deku said. Ah, uh, yes. Well, um. If it's okay with you. Could you show me your scars Penny asked looking away. Oh. Well, if seeing them will make you less conscious about your scar. Then I don't mind showing you, but not here Deku said. Of course. Shall we head to our accommodation? The others shouldn't be back for a while Penny said. Okay. Let's get going then Deku said. Deku and Penny then stood and headed back to the dorm room. Alright. Let's start with my very first scar Deku said. Deku then presented Penny his crooked right hand. How? How have I not noticed it Penny asked. It is a pretty small scar to be fair. I'm more surprised that you didn't know it was crooked. Oh my gods it is Penny said. Penny then began to trace her hands over Deku's hand. May I ask, how did you get it Penny asked. I got it during a fight with another student. It was during our village's annual sports festival. Students participate in games to show off their skills and get scouted by hunters Deku said. Like the Vittle Festival Penny said. Care to explain Deku asked. 
It's a fighting tournament that happens every two years, with students coming from the four kingdoms to participate. It's to show a sense of unity between the kingdoms. Also, the winning team's kingdom gets to host the next Vittle Festival, and a beacon team one penny said. I see. Anyways I got this scar, because at the time I had very little control over my semblance. I could choose where the power went, but not how much, it was all or nothing. I did my best, but I lost, but I was able to save someone from a dark path. And now this scar is a reminder of that Deku said. I see. But please, never do that again. You now have much better control over, so I don't want to see you do that Penny said. If only life allowed me to Deku said. What do you mean Penny said? Deku then removed his blazer and shirt to reveal all the scars along his arms. That. That is a really big scar Penny said tracing her hands over the big scar on Deku's right arm. Yeah. I got these ones from fighting a villain Deku said. But why? Why didn't you run away Penny asked. I couldn't, even though I had control over my semblance by then, he was just too fast and strong. There was no way I could outrun him. And I had to protect a little boy from him. So, I stayed. I did what I could. In the end I had to surpass my limit multiple times to defeat him Deku said. Penny now started to cry. Penny, what's wrong Deku asked. I don't know why I'm crying. Hearing what has happened to you. No one should have to go through that Penny said. But we have to. As hunters, we must put our lives on the line to Deku said. Stop. Just stop. I, I don't want you to say that. Your life is just as important as anyone else's. I don't want to hear you say that Penny cried. Deku didn't know how to respond, or if he could. So, he just grabbed hold of Penny and pulled her into a hug until she stopped crying. You feeling better Deku asked. Yeah Penny said. Penny then began to reach for her collar. But Deku grabbed her hands before she could reach it. Penny. You don't need to show me, your scar Deku said. But you've shown me yours. By that logic I should show you mine Penny said. Penny, you don't need to show me anything. You can show me when you are ready to show the others Deku said. Penny almost began to cry again. I Deku. You're so sweet Penny said, causing Deku to blush. Just then the door flung open. Standing in the doorway was Jack, David and Evelyn. We didn't mean to interrupt David said. Oh, Penny making some moves are we Evelyn said. It's not what it looks like Deku and Penny said. But I does though, but I know you two aren't doing that. So, what were you doing Jack asked. Ajuku was kind enough to show me his scars Penny said. I'm still gonna believe that you two were being naughty Evelyn said. Evelyn Jack shouted. Moo. Fine Evelyn said. Evelyn then walked up to Deku and began inspecting his scars. This is gonna require a lot of salve to remove all of these Evelyn said. Thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to get these scars removed. At least not yet Deku said. By why David asked. They are a reminder of how I need to gain full control of my semblance and it reminds me to not be so reckless again. I could lose the full use of my arms if I'm not careful. But once I've mastered my semblance then I may get them removed Deku said. Seriously. You could lose use of your arms. Just how powerful are you Jack asked. I can create extreme winds from a 100% flick of a finger Deku said. Not to self. Never fight Ijuku David said. Seriously. I'm only able to use 8% comfortable remember. You'll have time to catch up Deku said. I hope so David said. So, you gonna put your shirt back on. Or can we keep looking at it Evelyn asked. Deku then quickly put his shirt back on. Mu Evelyn said. Wednesday. Day 10. 
Good morning, children. Today's sparring will put partners against other partners. When I call your names, please step down into the arena Glinda said. This should be fun. We haven't fought as a pair since the Emerald Forest Jack said. And this time I won't slow you down David said. It seems like I'll be sitting this one out. Guess this will be a common occurrence Deku said. Don't worry Aizuku. We'll make sure that you aren't always left out Penny said. Yeah. We'll share you Evelyn said. Will you take him this time? Me and David are gonna steal the show Jack said. Phew phew phew. Sorry to disappoint you but it's us who will come out as the most popular threesome Evelyn said. Evelyn, first. This is not a compaction Jack said. Hum, technically Penny said. Second. Even if it was, we'd totally win Jack said. No you wouldn't Evelyn said. Oh. So Penny is stronger than me. Or did you get that much stronger in the time I didn't see you Jack asked. First of all. You can't have a threesome with two people. And we're not talking about fighting prowess. We're talking about popularity Evelyn said. So. It's still sparring class Jack said. And me, Aizuku and Penny are strong enough. But we also have something more that you two Evelyn said. And. That would be. You're honestly losing me, here Jack said. Well, Penny has a nice bum and a skirt Evelyn said. Carrots Jack shouted. What? It's true Evelyn said. Would you say it's considered attractive from a Penny said. Penny, please, do not encourage your partner Jack said. And Aizuku has a smoking hot pot, that would please any girl Evelyn said. Evelyn Jack said. Phew phew phew. Last but not least. I have Evelyn said. Evelyn then looked at Deku. She then walked behind him and hugged him she pressed her boobs against his back and wrapped her arms around his waist. Her hands wandered dangerously close to his crotch. This caused Deku to be paralyzed from embarrassment. Evelyn Jack shouted at the top of her lungs. Miss Ivory Glinda said. Nora Nora chimed in. Team Jaddy were given detention and were now sitting in the classroom. Deku was on the opposite side of the classroom staying as far away from Evelyn as possible. Hope you're happy, carrots. Not even two weeks in, and we got detention Jack said. Why are you asking me? You're the one who flew off the handle Evelyn said. That's not. Alright, this one is on me Jack said. I may have gone a bit overboard, though. Sorry about that Evelyn said. A bit overboard, she says David said. I didn't see him complaining about it. His body gave the excited signal Evelyn said. But his mind didn't. He didn't complain because the embarrassment paralyzed him David said. You're thinking about it Evelyn said. I'm not David said. R2. You wanted it to be you. Didn't you Evelyn asked. How would you like it if you were suddenly hugged from behind David asked. I don't know. Let's try Evelyn said. Evelyn then turned around, exposing her backside to David. She then backed up pressing her back against David's front. Go on. Grab hold. You can grab me high or low. Whichever you prefer Evelyn said as she wiggled against David. Professor, permission to go to the bathroom David asked. Granted Glinda said. David then left the classroom. Evelyn, could you please refrain from giving the lads a heart attack Jack asked. Oh, it's not my intention, believe me. Aizuku was very forward with touching my ears. So, I was just getting back at him by touching him up. And considering how touchy-feely David got with me last time, I didn't expect that reaction. But I should have foreseen yours Evelyn said. He did what Jack asked. David. Touched you Penny asked. Nothing like that, he also touched my ears. 
but seeing how into it he got, I didn't think physical contact would have this kind of effect on him. Unlike Aizuku, who I do it for his reactions Evelyn said. Oh. I see. Still. I would prefer to have a functioning Aizuku. And sorry. It's just that. Public, you know. I haven't been keeping up my social graces on the road Jack said. Um, Evelyn. Are you interested in David Penny asked. Home. That's a pretty vague question, partner. Interested how Evelyn asked. Non. Non platonically Penny said. That's more precise. And. I don't know Evelyn said. You don't if you like him Jack asked. Hey, I haven't known him for that longer than you, almighty leader. But he's fun and smart and not bad on the eyes, no Evelyn asked. Home, true. So you'd like to find out Jack asked. I think so. I promise not to do anything to disrupt the team balance, though Evelyn said. I I see Penny said. Or, don't look at me like that, Penny. I feel like I just kicked a puppy. He's not my exclusive property or anything like that. You want to do something too, just do it Evelyn said. Her Penny said. You heard her, Penny. Hell, you sleep pretty much in the same bed. You have plenty of opportunity. And have three people in those beds. You would be practically touching each other Jack said. I I don't know what that means. I don't have knowledge of how. If. What to Penny said. Well, it seems like we have three completely inexperienced people on this team. H.M. Evelyn said. M. Right. Two Jack said. Penny, when you saw me teasing David and Ijuku, what did you think? Honestly Evelyn asked. I, I felt a little bad for them, being so embarrassed, but... A part of me wanted... Wanted to do the same thing. I discovered that after I saw you and Ijuku on Sunday. Is that weird Penny asked? That's a start, is what it is. Then try to think of a way to make him react to you the same way he and Ijuku reacted to me Evelyn said. Well. Maybe not the same. I'd like for him to keep his speech patterns, in my case Penny said. Oh, man, I so have to apologize for putting them on the spot like that Evelyn said. Hey, Penny. Do you like Ijuku non-platonically Jack asked. Well, um, I don't know. I enjoy the time I spend with him, and sometimes I don't want him to leave Penny said. Oh, that's a definite sign. Want both of them to yourself do you Evelyn teased. Evelyn sure. He could hear you Penny said. He's too busy to notice and right now. I think he's trying to ignore me. I may have pushed it a bit too far with him Evelyn said. I'd say Jack said. Do you like him non-platonically Penny asked. I can answer that. Of course you do Jack said. Hold on. I've known him for less time than David Evelyn said. Yeah. But you haven't offered to get changed in front of David Jack said. That was more to mess with you. Though the way he touched my ears. He was gentle with them, and it made me feel something. But I'm not sure that I like him that way yet Evelyn said. So, you two basically like the both of them and will be happy with either. Appears that's their race to be the one to choose Jack said. I wouldn't say that. I said I wouldn't do anything to upset the team balance. And I won't break that. So, there is no race to claim either of them. What happens, happens. Right Penny Evelyn said. Right. We won't make a competition out of this Penny said. Now let's talk about you and Ijuku Evelyn said. What Jack asked. Ijuku has looked at you for prolonged period of times Penny said. Well, um, I'm glad he finds me attractive Jack said. Enough so to Evelyn asked. Professor Goodwixth. Permission to go to the bathroom Jack asked. David then returned. 
permission granted Glinda said. Running away are we Evelyn asked. Jack said nothing as she left. After getting out of detention Deku had gone to the gym to distract himself from Evelyn's boldness. He couldn't get it out of his head, but it at least helped him repress it a bit. He then returned to the dorm room. Hello Aizuku. You doing alright Jack asked. I'm doing better than before. Where's Evelyn Deku asked. She's gone to bed already Jack said. Deku looked at Evelyn bed. He only saw a pair of ears poking out of the duvet. Thank God. I don't think I can look at her yet Deku said. You know she didn't mean to do that to you. She thought you would be alright with it, since you were very forward with touching her ears Jack said. Is she though? She seems to like doing that. Making people freeze with her body Deku said. She doesn't actually Jack said. Then why is she Deku said. Ah, Aizuku, Jack. You are back. We have saved you some dinner for you too. It's still hot, but you better eat it soon Penny said, as she and David came out of the kitchen. Okay. Thanks Penny Jack said. You haven't eaten Deku asked. No I went on a walk to clear my head Jack said. Jack and Deku then went into the kitchen and began to eat. So do you think by morning you will be able to look at Evelyn Jack asked. I think so. I've just never had someone be this affectionate. Is that the right word to call it Deku asked. I suppose it is. She did use her body to get a rise out of you Jack said. Is she like this all the time Deku asked. Amends is yes. But doing something like that. No, she usually doesn't Jack said. Then why did she do it Deku asked. She's always been one to mess with people. She finds enjoyment in it. Of course, she doesn't push it too far, and when she does, she apologizes Jack said. Okay. But she hasn't apologized yet Deku said. She's probably going to do it in the morning. She did turn in very early. I think she did that so you wouldn't have to talk to her until tomorrow Jack said. That's actually very considerate of her Deku said. Like I said. She likes to mess with others. I can't tell you how many times she's messed with me. But in the end it was all pretty harmless Jack said. Until you poisoned her Deku said. Hey Jack said. The two then finished eating their dinner. You hit the shower first. I'll wash the plates Jack said. Okay. Thanks Deku said. Jack then picked up both plates and stood up. Little did Jack know that her shoe had become untied. As she walked to the sink she stepped on her shoelace. Thankfully Deku was able to catch her. Thanks Jack said. A fall is no fun for anyone Deku said. You can say that again Jack said. Deku then noticed that his hand had gone under Jack's shirt and lifted it up enough to see her lower chest. Sorry Deku said, looking away and blushing. Jack wondered why Deku said that, but then she felt a cold hand on her chest. Though Deku didn't move his hand away. It stayed firmly in place. Jack then regained her balance. It's. It's fine. You didn't do it on purpose Jack said. Next time. Make sure your shoes are tied Deku said. How on remnant did that happen though Jack said. Little Evelyn did it Deku said. Maybe Jack said. Deku then stood up and went into the bathroom, while Jack washed the plates. Ah. Now I have something stuck in my head Jack said quietly. Thursday. Day 11. Hey, David. Guess what Evelyn said. I have no hints, so I give up David said. Mua, you're no fun Evelyn said. Well maybe if you actually made a proper game out of it. Then it'll probably be more fun Deku said. Just then there was a flash that blinded Deku and David. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off the flash a voice said. When the two got their vision back they saw another bunny girl, 
thinking for a few seconds that they were seeing double. Remember when I told you about the student who took a picture of me? This is Velvet Scarlatina Evelyn said. It's a pleasure. Em, maybe not for you too though. I'm really sorry Velvet said. No no, it's a pleasure for us too. But I'd be lying if I said that didn't catch me by surprise David said. I can still see. So, it's not all bad Deku said. Sorry. But you two have such interesting faces that I couldn't resist Velvet said. Thank. I think Deku said. Oh my, Velvet. Hitting on my teammates already Evelyn asked. Huh. Oh, I didn't mean it in an aesthetical sense. It's just. Not right now but earlier, when you two were more relaxed, there was something about your lineaments. Like something lurking just beneath the surface, subtly affecting your facial expressions. Um, sorry, I guess that must sound weird. And we haven't even properly introduced each other yet. I'm Velvet Scarlatina, second year. It's nice to meet the both of you Velvet said. I Juku Midori are. I also go by Deku Deku said. David D.I.K. Begis. It's nice to meet you too. But what exactly did you mean by David said? Velvet. We're going a voice called. Oh. Um, coming, Coco. I have to go. It was nice meeting you, David. Ajuku. Bye, Evelyn Velvet said. Velvet then left. Intriguing little bunny isn't she Evelyn asked. I guess. I didn't really get what she was talking about, though David said. Hum Evelyn said. Deku was currently training in one of the classroom arenas. He was practicing his aim with air force. He then heard the classroom doors opened. He looked over and saw Pira with a blonde haired boy. Hey Pira Deku greeted. Hello Aizuku. Are training in here Pira asked. Yes I am. I'm practicing my aim Deku said. I see. Then we'll leave you alone Pira said. Funny how. When we get back to it. We can't find a place to train the blonde boy said. What do you mean Deku asked as he jumped out of the area and made his way over to them. We've been trying to find a free arena to practice combat in. But they are all in use when one two Pira said. I see. Then you can take this arena. I can find another place to practice Deku said. Really, but you were here first the blonde boy said. It's alright Deku said. Jan. Jan Ark. It's alright Jan. Why should I take up a spot that could be better used by you too Deku said. But you have your own training to do. Using an area for it is perfectly valid Pira said. If you really feel bad for kicking me out. Then maybe I could join you for a bit. So, what will you two be doing Deku asked. To be honest with you. I'm far behind everyone else. I've spent the past six months trying to reach the same level as everyone else Jan said. I wouldn't say you're that far behind. I mean you do better than David in combat class Deku said. Still, second to last isn't that much better Jan said. Then it's really good that you have the best first year fighter as a combat teacher Deku said. I guess you're right. Still can't believe I'm her partner. Anyone would be a better partner for her Jan said. Don't say that Jan. You're a fine partner for me Pira said. Pira seemed to be a bit dejected by what Jan said. So shall we have a match Jan Deku asked. I'm sure. I might not be the best opponent Jan said. That doesn't matter. This is your training after all Deku said. Okay then Jan said. Deku and Jan then made their way onto the arena. Are you ready Jan Pira asked. No. But let's get on with it Jan said. Are you ready Aizuku Pira asked. Ready and waiting Deku said. Okay. Begin Pira said. 
the fight between Zhang and Deku didn't last very long. Though during the match Zhang was able to predict and block Deku's attacks. He even got a few hits in. Man, that was really bad Zhang said. I wouldn't say so Deku said as he helped Zhang up. Stop lying Zhang said. No. I'm serious. You were able to predict and block some of my attacks. You even got a few hits in. And considering the speed I was traveling at and the force behind my punches. You did very well Deku said. Zhang's face lit up. You really think so Zhang asked. Yeah. It's not about winning the match, it's about winning in improvements. Ask yourself, would have you been able to do what you did six months ago Deku asked. No Zhang said. Zhang and Deku then entered a long discussion about combat, completely forgetting about Pira. I wish he would talk to me like that Pira said. Soon Deku left Zhang and Pira to train by themselves. Friday. Day 12. After school Deku went and knocked on Team RWBY's dorm room. Ruby then answered the door. Hey, Ajuku Ruby said. Ah, Ruby just the person I wanted to see Deku said. You want to make a start on weapon schematics Ruby asked. Yes. If you are free that is Deku said. I'm free. Come on in Ruby said. Deku then entered and placed his gauntlets and boots on a table. Okay. Tell me everything you know about how your weapons work Ruby said. My iron soles are spring loaded so the end of them can retract and then spring out to deliver a second blow. It also reduces the impact on my legs Deku said showing the action of the boots. Cool. So, they allow you to hit twice with one kick. Nice. Okay for maintenance for the boots, you should keep them clean and check the springs periodically for where Ruby said. Noted Deku said. Now how do the gauntlets work Ruby asked. Well. These yellow bits and the cylinder around the wrist allow me to shoot air bullets. The yellow sights shoot smaller air bullets than the cylinder which jolts forwards to allow for larger air bullets. Also, inside the air force gauntlets are little nubs. They distribute the force of an impact along my whole arm Deku said. I'm having trouble understanding how it actually works. I would need to take it apart and have a look Ruby said. Then why don't we Deku said. You sure? I may not be able to put it back together Ruby said. Ruby. You are the best person I know who could do this. You built David's weapon in a day, and it hasn't failed yet. So, I trust you with my gear Deku said. Okay. Let's get to it then Ruby said. The two then spent the rest of the day talking apart and leering how Ajuku's gear works. It was late at night when they had finished. Okay. That's the schematics of your weapons done. Now you should have no problem with weapon maintenance Ruby said. I can't thank you enough Ruby Deku said. Don't mention it. I actually had a lot of fun learning how your weapon works Ruby said. If only you had that attitude to dust class wise said. As team leader. I get to be interested in what I want Ruby said. But you need to understand dust to be able to pass out end of year exams wise said. I think I should get going Deku said. Okay. See you tomorrow Ruby said. See you Ruby Deku said. Saturday. Day 13. Deku made his way to Team RWBY's dorm room. He knocked on the door. Blake then opened the door. Ajuku, good morning Blake said. Hey, Blake. I was wondering if you wanted to get a book to read Deku asked. Oh, um, sure. I'm free so it's a good time. Though I haven't worked on a list of safe books Blake said. That's fine. We can browse and find a book that catches our eyes Deku said. True, and sorry for running off last time Blake said. No. I'm sorry for springing that one you Deku said. It's alright, but how did you know Blake asked. I saw you reading in the library Deku said. 
How did I not notice you Blake asked. You were pretty focused Deku said. I wanna die now Blake said. But then we won't be able to read together Deku said. That's a fair point. Let me grab my scroll and I'll meet you outside Blake said. Sounds good Deku said. Blake then went back into her dorm room. I'm going into Vale, young Blake said. Again. You starting to worry me here, Blake Young said. I I mean, I'm not going alone Blake said. Shut up. You're telling me this isn't about business Young asked. Why must you act so surprised about it Blake asked. Why? Give me a break. Only reason you've gone into Vale since the fight at the docks has been to look up information on your former friends. And if you come with us, half the time you find an excuse to jet for a few minutes Young said. Alright, maybe your surprise is. Legitimate Blake sighed. Maybe, she says. Who are you going with, anyway Young asked. Ajuku Blake said. Is this an apology date? Gonna make it up to him Young said. Excuse me Blake said. You gonna apologize for exposing with that belladonna booty young teased. No. If anything you should do that since you started the rumor Blake said. Bring him in then, if you're not having him young teased. No Blake said. Want to ask for his opinion young said. Blake then left without another word. Blake then met up with Deku. Hey Blake Deku said. Let's please put as much distance as possible between us and Beacon as soon as possible Blake said. Okay Deku said, wondering why Blake seems to be in a bad mood. Blake and Deku then boarded the bullhead and headed into Vale. On the trip over Blake was muttering about something. Sorry. I haven't exactly been a great traveling companion, have I Blake said. Something happened Deku asked. Just young being silly. Probably on purpose Blake said. Tell me about it Deku said. Yeah. Though, I've caused my team to worry, in the past. My team. And I think I'm starting to worry them again, but. I can't let them distract me from what I'm doing Blake said. It sounds important Deku said. It's not important, it's vital. But still. This is not what we're here for. I guess I can afford to not think about such things for one morning. I probably shouldn't let Young's efforts to take my mind off things be in vain Blake said. If she's anything like Ruby, she may just try harder. I can't imagine what she'll say to distract you Deku said. I don't want to find out. Let's go. The bookshop is not far Blake said. Blake and Deku then made their way to the bookshop. Tuxen's book trade Deku said, reading the sign above the door. Home to every book under the sun Blake said. Oh. Where that written Deku asked. It's not. It's the owner's motto. Well, ex-owner, actually. He sold the activity and moved away Blake said. That'd be Tuxen, right. But why haven't they changed the name Deku asked. Place renown, I'd say. This is quite the popular shop, after all. The previous owner worked hard to make it successful Blake said. Well then shall we go in Deku asked. Yeah let's Blake said. The two then entered the bookshop. They look at many books. They settled on one about a guy who was put down by society and wants to prove himself and a ninja girl who wants right her wrongs. Both characters were depicted as fauness, but with multiple features. The boy was a rabbit, and the girl was a cat. Good morning. You're the new owner, right Blake asked. Oh, good morning. Were you one of Tuxen's clients the shopkeeper asked. Yes. I haven't been here in a while but I'm one of his regulars. I must say, I like the fact that that you decide to keep the name Blake said. Oh, it was the least I could do, considering what happened the shopkeeper said. Excuse me Blake asked. I wanted a way for people to remember him, you know. 
I figured I could pay my respects this way the shopkeeper said. Pay. Respects. What are you talking about? What happened to Tuxen Blake asked. You mean you don't know the shopkeeper asked. Why do you think him Blake shouted. Blake. Calm down Deku said. I'm. I'm sorry but. But I thought he had just moved away Blake said. That was the plan, yes. We had made it official, transferred ownership and everything. He just needed a couple more days to pack up and leave the shopkeeper said. But Deku said. The day before he was supposed to leave. They found him dead the shopkeeper said. Was he? Was he killed Blake asked. Yes. Police say that he was. Kicked to death the shopkeeper said. No. This. This can't be Blake said. Blake then quickly ran out of the shop. Blake Deku said. Deku quickly paid for the books and then chased after Blake. Deku finds Blake hiding in an alleyway. Blake Deku said. Why? After ignoring him for so long. I can't understand. They're moving and I can't even understand Blake said. Blake Deku said. Blake looks at Deku but stays sat down. Blake. Are you in danger Deku asked. What Blake asked. How did you know he was killed. Is there someone after you Deku asked. How do you. Why are you asking me this Blake asked. You asked was he killed. Your immediate though was that he was assassinated Deku said. He. He's someone I knew from my past. We were never close, we weren't friends or anything like that. But he was trying to leave that past behind Blake said. So you think he was killed because he was trying to leave Deku asked. And I can't even understand why. He wasn't a higher up, he had no information which could damage them nor the will to divulge it. He just. Wanted to leave Blake said. Blake is this the sort of thing that makes your team worry about you Deku asked. What Blake said. You seem to know something about his death. So tell me. Does your team know Deku asked. Yes. Yes they do know Blake said. Then I won't ask any further Deku said sitting down next to Blake. Thanks for not try to pry further Blake said. I can tell this is very private to you. And I trust that your teammates will protect you Deku said. This must be the worst outing you've ever been on Blake said. Trust me it isn't. I've been targeted before Deku said. Wait what Blake asked. Enough with the doom and gloom. Let's get something to eat. Get your mind off things Deku said. Can we just stay here for a while Blake asked. Whatever make you comfortable Deku said. Thanks Blake said. The two remained where they were, sitting in silence. After a while Toto got up and got something to eat before heading back to Beacon, still remaining silent between each other. This may sound really weird. But thanks for not worrying about me Blake said. Your team is worried about you enough. Let me be the one to be there for you Deku said. I think I will Blake said. Now. Here's your copy the hero and traitor Deku said. Oh. I completely forgot about the books Blake said. Call me when you want to start reading this. I assume you want to decompress after today Deku said. I will. And thanks again Blake said. No worries Deku said. Sunday. Day 14. Today, Team Jaddy have gone into Vale for dorm much needed pantry shopping. All right, David, Ajuku and I got the day list Jack said. And we have the breakfast list Penny said. We make our rounds and meet back in the marketplace's break area by 12 David said. Then it's ice cream time. You'll love the place David and I found last time Evelyn said. Ready. Mission start Jack said. Penny and Evelyn then split off from the others. 
Okay, what's the first item on the list David asked? Cinnamon. Although it doesn't specify what variety. Though I probably know what variety you want Deku said. Vacuo variety for sure. Believe me, we won't go through my stash of Mistrali anytime soon Jack said. Mistrali it is, then David said. You make a convincing argument Deku said. Why you little Jack said. Over in another part of Vale. I don't think the situation is as grievous as you think, Howard a voice said over a scroll. Are you serious? Do you have your serious face on, right now? I can't tell because it's not a video call, but I think you're yanking my chain, right now. Ozpin's got it Howard said. No. You think that Ozpin's got it the voice said. How could he have it Howard asked. What he got thanks to his assistant is two teens who were around the point of impact of a meteor the voice said. One of which was walking around with a very peculiar object which he would no doubt put under lock and key Howard said. And that's where your argument is faulty. Remember that it was sent away to be hidden as a last resort. We don't know what appearance it was given but I'd wager it would be something inconspicuous, considering there are people actively looking for it. AKA us the voice said. All right, that makes sense. He still got the only witnesses to the crash Howard said. I guess you will have to masquerade as a student. Did you get a description of the two the voice asked? Yeah, but I doubt it's going to be that easy. I mean, if I had the only witness to a mysterious event that threatened the safety of the capital of a kingdom under my protection, I would keep them secluded away until Howard said. Evelyn, I think that shop should be suitable Penny said. Matters were thoroughly investigated Howard said. Home, are you absolutely sure that the prices are lower here than in the market Evelyn asked. They are for this particular item. I checked their catalog on the way to Beacon Penny said. I can't believe this Howard said. Howard. What is it the voice asked. Let's just say that the ounce may not be the shrewd international man of mystery I believed him to be Howard said. Back with Jack, David and Deku. Hey, guys. Did Evelyn apologize to the both of you Jack asked. Yeah. She apologized to me Thursday morning. Thank God she didn't try anything Deku said. She did but it wasn't a big deal, really David said. Your complexion kind of said otherwise Jack said. M, point taken. I mean that it objectively wasn't a big deal, I was just surprised. I mean, I expected that Evelyn may do something to tease us but I didn't expect her to be so. Old David said. What David asked. After your first meeting, you didn't expect her to be so bold Jack said. Wait, what about your first meeting Deku asked. She climbed on top of my while I was asleep and tried to observe me as she called it. And I knew she could be bold in general with her actions and with her words, but I didn't think she could be bold in. You know David said. Using her body to get a rise out of people Jack asked. Yes, that. I didn't think she was the type David said. I didn't think she would be that forward to do that and be close to touching. But I should have expected this after the pancake Wadiku said. Well actually she isn't the type to do those things Jack said. I'm confused David said. Then why Deku asked. Listen, I've known Evelyn for a few years now. She was an early bloomer, so to speak, and while she may have used her wiles on people from time to time, that's all she did. So, it's not that she's comfortable in using her body to get a rise out of people. She's comfortable in using her body to get a rise out of you too Jack said. That. I mean, that can't be right David said. Why not Jack asked. Because while my amnesia leaves me next to zero experience with women, I'm still a man and she's. She's so pretty and David said. Sexy, I know. David. Those kind of reactions and thoughts are perfectly normal. What I'm saying is that she may be okay with it. And who knows, she may not be the only one. 
I think you're selling yourself a bit too short Jack said. Frankly, I'm not selling myself at all. Between everything going on in my life in the last two weeks, I never thought about this kind of stuff David said. I don't think Evelyn cares much about those little details Deku said. You're probably right David said. On the topic of Evelyn. Ajuku what do you think of Evelyn, and her sexiness Jack asked. Well. I, um Deku said, blushing and muttering. Oh, my gods Jack. You've broken him David said. Um, hello. Remnant to Ajuku. You there Jack asked. Ha, huh, um, yeah. Sorry Deku said. Evelyn was way bolder than that, but you're blushing so much Jack said. Well. I am just not used to talking to or about attractive girls Deku said. Seriously. I have amnesia, but I can still talk about how attractive Evelyn is David said. But you've been around girls since day one. I haven't had many interactions with girls Deku said. Really? Why Jack asked. I wasn't very popular with the others in my village Deku said. Bullshit. Not to quote Evelyn, but you have everything a girl could want in a man David said. But I wasn't always like this. Everyone in my village has at least a semblance. Some kids even have their aura unlocked by the time they enter our academy, some even have a semblance Deku said. Well. Really. Little kids had their own aura and sometimes a semblance Jack asked. Not little kids. 10 years old is when most children unlock their aura. Due to our remote and hostile environment at the age of 10 most families unlock their child's aura so they would be safer. Even though it's weak at first by the time they enter the academy, they have strong auras. However, I was not so lucky Deku said. What do you mean David asked. When my aura was unlocked, it was practically non-existent. I basically had no aura, and when the kids I played with found out they started bullying me, and that's when I got my nickname. Deku is a play on my name Ijuku, and it means useless. I would never get to be the hero I wanted to be. I tried to deny it. I did analysis on the other kids and hunters on their semblances. I managed to enter the academy, but it was a fluke Deku said. Then. Then how did you end up the way that you are now Jack asked. A hunter who went by all might saw potential on me. He told me that he was in a similar situation to me, and he became the best hunter in our village. He helped me a lot. He got me to the starting line with the others through intense physical and aura training. Now look at me no I've got a strong aura and powerful semblance Deku said. That. That David said. Sounds like a shitty childhood. Being discriminated against because of something that's not your fault. I'm glad you're here now Jack said. Am I though? I mean even though it was rough I wouldn't be here if things were different. And I miss my home. I left a lot of friends I made in my class and my family back home Deku said. Okay. Enough with the doom and gloom. Ajuku answer the question what do you think of Evelyn's body David asked. Well, she. She. She has a mature body. More mature than any of my classmates but, um, some of them could catch up. So, to speak Deku said. So, you went from being surrounded by pretty girls to have a sexy bunny who is very bold with you David said. Wait even bigger than Jack asked. Deku nodded. Man. Outdone by 15 year olds. Some of the girl won't like that. Anyways. Shall we continue shopping Jack asked. If we don't have to talk about Evelyn's. Then, yes please Deku said. Back with Evelyn and Penny. And that's the last item on the list. Hooray us. Want to head back Evelyn asked. Home, actually. Before we go back, Evelyn Penny said. Hum Evelyn said. I thought. About what you said last time, I did some research and Penny said. You naughty girl Evelyn said. It's. 
It's not too much Penny asked. Only if you play it safe Evelyn said. Playing it. Safe Penny asked. Phew phew phew. First of all, the pose Evelyn said. Target confirmed, boss. It corresponds to the description I gathered Howard said. Time to go back to school, then. Me and the others will be a few more days. We should make a report about this before leaving the voice said. I'd need to have gone to school to begin with to go back. Later, boss Howard said. Team Jaddy had now returned to Beacon and had finished having dinner in their dorm room. Though they made a bit too much food. How did it go, Penny Deku asked as Penny returned. Perfectly. Young seemed particularly happy to take the extra food off our hands. Although Ruby complained about the lack of dessert Penny said. All right. You sure I can take a shower before you go, then David asked. Sure, go right ahead Jack said. Fine by me Evelyn said. By all means Penny said. David nods and gets up. He deposits his plate in the dishwasher as he goes. All right, Penny. Do you remember the plan Evelyn asked? Affirmative Penny said. Wait. What's is this plan Deku asked? Remember, you're to get into the shower last and come back after David has fallen asleep. Jack, have you prepared the object Evelyn asked? Yes, I have but I'm still not completely sold on this plan Jack said. Is there anything I missed Penny asked? No, but. It doesn't feel like something you'd do, Penny. Then again. I guess the whole point, isn't it? Making David look at you in a new light. Even if I don't understand what you need makeup for Jack asked. Right. And that's, um, for decoration Penny said. It's makeup after all. Operation Slumber Encounter is a go Evelyn said. What are you talking about? This feels like something I shouldn't be a part of. Should I sleep somewhere else Deku asked. Oh, um, sorry Aizuku. In my planning I kind of forgot that you share the bed with us Penny said. That's a great idea, now you will be all alone with David, Penny. Aizuku you can come sleep with me, I have two big cushions for you Evelyn said. On second thought. I'll stay where I am. But Penny Deku said. Hum Penny said. Please keep the noise down Deku said, as then he left the kitchen. Oh my. I don't think he of all people could think Evelyn said. Well, you did make it sound like that. And he's more mature than some people I know Jack said. Hey Evelyn said. I'm. I'm not going that far Penny said. Yet Evelyn said. Jack, David, Deku and Evelyn were now in bed, while Penny was still in the shower. Good night, Deku. Evelyn. Jack David said. Night David Deku said. Night, partner Jack said. Night, David. Sleep tight but not too tight Evelyn said. David then went to sleep. Soon Deku followed suit. Deku then opened his eyes and found himself in a black void. His body was mostly covered in a black mist. Only the top of his head and right hand was visible. Hey little man a voice shouted. Deku turned around to see the fifth user, Degro Banjo Hero name Lariat. You've still got it wrong. You need to embrace it. Make it your own Lariat said. Deku just looked down. But doesn't matter right now. We need to get back home, things are going to happen. And with your disappearing act, it's going to make them bolder Lariat said. Deku used his right hand to draw a question mark in the air. Oh, you still thinking that? Whatever happened that transported us here, it wasn't any of the other quirks. It was something different. We have have felt something, no someone else is in here. But we can't see them only fell them, but it's very faint. We'll continue to look for them, but you need to find a way home Lariat said. Deku nodded. Now, 
start using us. We are all one now Lariat said. Deku then woke up. His body felt hot. Deku then looked around the room from right to left. As he looked around, he saw that everyone was asleep. He then felt David tossing and turning. He looked down to see David, but his eyes stopped at another sight. He saw Penny out of the duvet and in ill-fitting nightwear. It showed Penny's neck and shoulder and showed other her thighs. Had a bad dream Ijuku Penny asked. Deku then moved his eyes from Penny's body to her face. Um. I wouldn't call it a bad dream. Just a weird dream. I was woken up more by the temperature than the dream Deku said. I think there may be something wrong with the heating. I'd say it's 5 degrees higher than it should be Penny said. That's why I'm sweating so much. Is this part of Operation Slumber Encounter Deku asked. Um. Yes Penny said. Okay. I'll leave it alone, but please hurry it up and turn the temperature down and keep it down when you do it Deku said, as he took off his shirt. Now it was Penny's turn to blush. Not just at Deku's words but also at his body. His body glistened in the low light from Penny's side of the bed. Deku then laid back down and closed his eyes, to try and fall asleep before Penny and David did it. Unfortunately, David woke up soon after. Are you awake too, David Penny asked. Penny. I I. I David stammered. There's something wrong with the dorm room heating Penny said. Excuse me David asked. The environmental temperature. I think the room's heating system may have been turned up by a few centigrade to high Penny said. So that's why I'm currently swimming in my own sweat David said. Were you having a bad dream? Your tossing and turning was above average Penny said. Oh. Well, I wouldn't call it a bad dream. But the finale was certainly shocking David said. I see. Do you? Do you want to talk about it Penny asked. Oh, it's... It's no big deal, really. We should get back to sleep, anyway. It's a school day. I'll... Turn the heater back down David said. Something... Wrong, David Penny asked. Nothing wrong. Gonna turn down that thing now David said. David then got out of bed and turned the heater down. Realizing that Penny was not gonna do it with David, Deku quickly fell back asleep. Though as he slept, he rolled over and was now right up next to Penny. David then climbed back into bed after turning the heater down. Phew phew phew, Operation Slumber Encounter was a complete success. The results were even better than we expected Evelyn whispered. Oh, my gods, go to sleep already Carrots Jack whispered. Save one for me Penny Evelyn whispered. Penny looked at Deku's cute sleeping face. She found it adorable. She looked at the scars along his body, she traced her hands over Deku's biggest scar and then touched her neck. She then soon went back to sleep, though keeping her hand on Deku's scar and was much closer to Deku. I like you too, Ajuku Penny whispered. Monday. Day 15. David. Ajuku. You're gonna miss breakfast Evelyn said. I want to miss the rest of life on Remnant, thank you very much David said. Penny has gone to wash up, you know Evelyn said. But she's going to come out, eventually. Wait, how do you know David asked. Details. Now stop being such a big baby and get out of bed. You too Ajuku Evelyn said. No David said. David Evelyn said. No. No 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 David shouted. Last chance. Get out of bed on your own or Evelyn said. You can't make me David shouted. Who's trying Evelyn asked. Jack then pulled David out of bed. Oh my god David shouted. You had your chance partner Jack said. Let me go, already. Ow 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 David said. And stop flailing around, already Jack said. Fine, fine. 
I'm up David said. Good. Now you get up to Aizuku. Or am I gonna have to do the same thing Jack said? Okay Deku tiredly said. Well. What's with the low energy Evelyn asked. Then Penny came out of the bathroom. I just feel very tired Deku said. Penny you naughty girl. Keeping Aizu up all night Evelyn teased. I I did no such thing. Aizuku shouldn't be tired he had a full night's rest Penny said. He's probably just hungry. Come on Aizuku let's get some food into you Jack said. I'm not hungry Deku said as he lied back down. Did he eat something to make him sick David asked. No. All the food that we ate was sanitary, and Aizuku shows no signs of any sickness Penny said. Jack then sat on the side of the bed. What's wrong Aizuku Jack asked. I I think I'm. Missing my home Deku said. Homesickness. But it's been two weeks. Surly you should have been homesick before now Evelyn said. Well. Yesterday Aizuku told us about his life at home, and I think that's made him feel homesick David said. Okay Aizuku. You stay here and rest, but make sure you eat something. We'll be back right after school ends Jack said. The four then left the room. As they made their way to the mess hall they ran into Glinda. Good morning students Glinda said. Good morning Miss Goodwitch the four said unenthusiastically. What's wrong students, and where is Mr. Midoriya Glinda asked. He's feeling homesick. So, we are letting him rest for the day Jack said. Home guess that's to be expected. He didn't really have the time to say goodbye and being so far away from home. You carry on students, I'll go and talk with Aizuku Glinda said as she then left for Team Jaddy's dorm room. Glinda knocked on the door but there was no answer. Glinda then opened the door and entered the dorm room. She saw Deku curled up on his bed. She then closed the door and sat next to Deku. I heard from your teammates that you're feeling homesick Glinda said. Deku nodded. Do you want to talk about it Glinda asked. Deku nodded. Glinda then stayed next to Deku listening to him and comforting him. Meanwhile with the rest of Team Jaddy. They were currently in the mess hall having breakfast. Do you think Aizuku will be okay Penny asked. I'm sure he will Penny. He's left a lot of people back home. He's just missing them. I'm sure he'll be fine David said. You're right. Still, I think we should sit down with him today and talk to him about it Evelyn said. Agreed. We need to make him feel at home here Jack said. Team RWBY then came over to them. Hey guys, where's Greeny Young asked. He's not feeling well Evelyn said. Oh no. Is he okay Ruby asked. He's physically fine. He's just missing his home Penny said. I see. Anything we could do to help Blake asked. Not as of right now. But you could help us make him feel more at home Jack said. Got it. Team RWBY is on the case Ruby said. I wish I could feel that Wise muttered. What was that Wise David said. I, I hope we can make him feel right at home with us. Yeah that Wise said. Soon the bell went, and they made their way to class. During the lesson David could hardly focus due to what happened last night. Um. H-E-T, Penny David said. Yes, David Penny asked. I wanted to apologize for last night David said. Oh, it's completely fine. I did not mind your prolonged staring triggered by my attractiveness at all Penny said. Evelyn snort out in barely restrained laughter, while David mouth is agape like a fish. I mean, you were staring because you found me attractive, right? You didn't find my body weird. You didn't see my neck Penny asked. Who uh, no, I didn't. See your neck and your... Your body is not weird I David said. Then that means that you find me attractive Penny asked. Penny, I've called you cute since day one, remember David said. 
Yes, but... Cute and pretty are things that don't necessarily imply sexual desire Penny said. David's mouth gapes even more while Evelyn slides under the desk laughing. Just then the bell went. That's all the time we have today, children. Don't forget to port said. Lunchtime David shouted as he quickly dashed out of the classroom. Well, congratulations, Penny. I can say with absolute certainty that he's been affected Jack said. I did it Penny said. But for the time being. Try not to push it further, alright. Let him process it Jack said. HM Penny said. And get back up already, Carrots Jack said. Evelyn then got off the floor. Good job Penny. Soon you will be a master like me Evelyn said. Thank you Penny said. Now let's talk about the other boy in your life, and his reaction. I don't think you should do that. Not right now Jack said. Jack is right. Though I'm 99% certain that Ijuku also found me attractive. And I. I also found him. Sexual attractive Penny said. After eating lunch, the team went back to their dorm room just outside of the dorm rooms they saw Glinda again. How's he doing Jack asked. He's doing much better than this morning, and he's had something to eat. I would suggest you ask him to tell you more about his home Glinda said. Will do David said. In their dorm room Deku was on his phone looking through picture of him and his mother and he and his friends. Glinda had given him permission to tell the rest of his team about the people from his world, provided he leave out the part of being from another world. The door to the room then began to open and Deku quickly hid his phone. Hey Aiju. You feeling better Evelyn asked. Yeah. I still feel tired, but I have more energy Deku said. That's good. Do you want to talk about your home Penny asked. Yeah. I think that'll help Deku said. The four then gathered around Aijuku. So, what do you want to know first Deku asked. If you don't mind. Tell us about your friends David said. Okay. My first friend I made when I entered the academy was a girl named Akako Yuriruka. She's a bubbly girl with a good outlook on life. She's actually the reason why I go by Deku, she changed the meaning of it Deku said. She sounds like a very good friend Jack said. She is Deku said. Deku then continued to tell the others about his friends from his world. Katsuki Bakugo, who I call Kakan. We were Deku said, but then his stomach rumbled. Seems like you still need to eat Jack said. Agreed. I have a much better appetite now Deku said. The five then enter the kitchen and have a second lunch. After eating Deku went back into the main room to sleep, while the others cleaned up. I need to go to the bathroom Penny said. Okay Jack said. Penny then left the room, though after a while Penny had not yet returned. Evil got suspicious and so entered the main room. What she saw shocked her. There was Ijuku and Penny, who was still in her uniform, sleeping together only a few inches apart. I'm not gonna let you get ahead Evelyn said. Evelyn then climbed into the bed with them. She planted her very close to Aijuku, so close that her boobs were pressed against his back. Penny then opened her eyes and saw what Evelyn was doing. Evelyn what are you Penny whispered. Just because I thought you how to be bold, doesn't mean I'll let you get ahead. Remember whatever happens happens, no matter who it's between Evelyn whispered. Well, I'm not going to back down Penny whispered. The two smiled at each other before they went to sleep next to Aijuku. The three stayed like that for the rest of the day and night. So, David had to sleep in Evelyn's bed. Tuesday. Day 16. Penny woke up early in the morning, as she opened her eyes she was met by Deku's messy green hair in her face. She then felt something touching her inner thigh. She looked down to see Deku's left arm very high up on her thigh. So, this is how they feel when Evelyn Penny whispered to herself. 
Penny then looked back to where Deku and Evelyn were. She saw that Deku's face was pressed between her boobs with Evelyn's arms wrapped around his head keeping his head there. Evelyn's skirt had ridden up her legs enough so that her underwear was visible. Penny also saw that Deku's right hand was on Evelyn's butt. I think we've gone too far in this Penny whispered. Penny then shook Evelyn awake. Home. What Penny? It's so early Evelyn said. Sush Penny whispered and then pointed down. Oh hello there Evelyn said, as she then moved her boobs out of Deku's face. She then felt Deku's hand on her butt. You little perv I do. B-O-O-P Evelyn said as she bopped Deku on the nose. Evelyn. I think we're going too far with this. We're almost fighting over them Penny said. Yeah. I can see that. I think we should back off for a while Evelyn whispered. Affirmative. Now we should get washed and changed Penny said. Penny and Evelyn then washed up and put on a clean set of Beacon's uniform. The Black's lesson had just ended and Team Jaddy were quite disturbed by today's subject. That was disturbing David said. The lesson had been about a settlement that was overrun by Grimm and to top off the story, no one survived. I agree. I had heard about the event before, but the way Professor Oblek talked about it made it particularly haunting Penny said. And to think something like that could possibly happen to my village Deku said. Right David said. Hey. I think you forgot this in class a voice said. Ha what David said. David turned around to see a guy with white hair and in a uniform, but it wasn't the beacon one. Want me to keep it he asked. Excuse me David asked. You're just staring at it instead of taking it back he said. Whoops. Sorry about that David said as he then grabbed his scroll. I was just wondering about your uniform. It's not from beacon, is it David asked. Nope. Mistral represent, Haven Academy. The name's Howard Taranjai Howard said. I'm David D.I.K. Begis. But what is a student from Mistral doing here David asked. Who uh, I'm a temporary transfer student for the Vital Festival Howard said. The what David asked. It's an international festivity that takes place every two years Penny said. What she said. But how can you not know, if I may Howard asked. N. I'm sorry, it's only been a couple of weeks since I joined Beacon and. Well, simply put, I have amnesia David said. For real. That must suck. How were you even able to join Beacon Howard asked. Well, Penny found me. She's Penny, by the way. Penny Polendana David said. Suffice to say, many things happened. It's a relatively lengthy story Penny said. I bet. Sounds like an adventure. Well, I think I kept you enough. Sorry for prying, guys Howard said. It's okay. Price you pay for not knowing stuff David said. The price of knowledge, as they say. Have a good day, guys Howard said, as he then left. Deku was currently sitting in the garden. Eyes closed and basking in the sunlight. Hey Aizuku. Are you okay Ruby asked. Deku opened his eyes and looked at Ruby with confusion before realizing what she meant. Yeah. I'm doing much better than yesterday Deku said. But you're not at 100%, are you Ruby asked, as she sat down next to Deku. No. Even though my teammates have made me feel at home here. I still miss my home Deku said. I understand. Coming to Beacon is the first time I've spent a long time away from home. Though I guess it's not the same as I can easily travel back to Patch Ruby said. Patch Deku asked. Patch is a small island to the west of Vale. It's much closer to here than your village in Anima, so I guess it's Ruby said. Ruby. I understand what you're staying. You also miss home Deku said. Yeah Ruby said. The two then sat there in silence. Hey, why don't we do something Ruby said. 
Like what Deku asked. I don't know yet. It'll just be something to do together as homesick buddies Ruby said. Sure, why not? Call me when you have some concrete for us to do Deku said. Will do Ruby said. The two then went their separate ways. Wednesday. Day 17. That's enough. Mr. Arxora has entered the red. Great form, Miss Damerot. But may I suggest less erratic movements next time Glinda said. But that's half the fun Evelyn said. Fun, she says John said. As for you, Mr. Ark Glinda said. John said. I must admit, I'm impressed. Your skills are progressing steadily and considering the level you were at when you joined Beacon. Whatever you're doing, keep it up Glinda said. Yes, John said. That's all, for today. Have a good day, children Glinda said. Good job, Evelyn David said. Very well fought. Your experience shows Penny said. You defiantly threw John for a loop with those moves Deku said. Thanks. Even if I've mostly fought Grim, before. Sparring with other Aura users is a nice change of pace Evelyn said. You're right. But is it enough Jack asked. What do you mean by that, Jack Deku asked. Well, except for Port's lessons, first year students don't have many opportunities to fight Grim Jack said. True. So Deku asked. Thing is, students that join combat academies already have at least a bit of experience with that because they come from lower grade academies. I was thinking of how to make you, David and Penny catch up on that Jack said. Any ideas David asked? A couple. I'll have to take it up the headmaster first, though. Now, let's go to lunch Jack said. Team Jaddy then left the classroom and headed to the mess hall. Hey Aizuku. Wait John called out, stopping Aizuku from leaving the mess hall. Hello John. What is it Deku asked. Can I ask for your help in training today one asked. Um, sure. I'm not doing anything this afternoon Deku said. Great thanks John said. Before you leave, why aren't you training with Piro Deku asked. Oh, something came up that she needed to deal with. I told her that I would find another partner. And that was you John said. Ah oh, okay. Lead the way to the classroom Deku said. We're not going to the classroom. I managed to steal the amphitheater John said. Nice. Let's go then Deku said. The two left the mess hall and headed for the amphitheater. So where should start Deku asked. With a match. I want to fight you again and tell me how to improve John said. You are very dedicated to your training Deku said. I have to be. I need to catch up with my teammates and not be a hindrance to them John said. Well keep at it, by the end of the year you will have caught up to them Deku said. You think so John asked. I know so it's been around 18 months since I started training to be a hunter and I've only had 6 months with me semblance Deku said. Really? That little time training and you're that good? That's amazing John said. Thanks, though I have been watching others and taking things from them that'll work for me Deku said. Maybe I should try that John said. I think you should. Next combat class or any time you spar with someone, watch them closely to see how they fight, and look for any weaknesses. It would also be useful for you to create a profile on them. I have my own and it's helped enormously Deku said. That sounds like an invasion of privacy John said. Ah. I guess you're right. But I didn't write anything personal about them, just fighting style, weapons and semblances that kind of stuff Deku said. I see. Then I'll create my own book on hunters then John said. Great. Now let's start Deku said. The two then trained together until night 4. The both of them then left the amphitheater and headed to the dormitory. They were now right outside Team JNPR's dorm room. Thanks again for your help John said. It's no problem John. 
You can call me when you want to train Deku said. Thanks John said. The two they exchanged scroll number. Deku then smelled something good. What smells so good Deku asked. Ah. It seems Nora has chosen today to be Pancake Day John said. Pancake Day Deku asked. Nora gets a day once a week to have pancakes for dinner. It was the only way to stop her from having pancakes every day John said. I see. Then have a great pancake day Deku said. Hey actually, as thanks for helping me, would you like some pancakes John asked. Not really a fan of pancakes, but I'll accept your offer Deku said. Great John said. Jan Yu and Deku then entered the dorm room. Welcome back Jan. Oh, hello Aizuku. What are you doing here Pira asked. Aizuku was helping me train in your stead, so I offer him some pancakes as thanks Jan said. They better not be my pancakes. Nora needs to have her 10 pancakes Nora said. 10 pancakes. You must really like pancakes Deku said. I don't like them. I love them Nora said. If you love them so much then why aren't you making them yourself Deku asked. Um. Well, I don't know how to make pancakes and Ren won't teach me Nora said. Probably because you'll just have pancakes for the rest of time Jan said. Hey, pancakes are the best food in the world. Isn't that right, Aizuku Nora asked. I prefer katsudon over pancakes Deku said. Katsu what Nora asked. Katsudon. It's a Mistrali meal. I've never seen or made it before only heard of it Ren said coming out of the kitchen. I don't mind giving you the recipe Deku said. Thanks. But I have some bad news, we only have enough pancakes for the four of us Ren said. That's okay. It's not the end of the world Deku said. Hey, Aizuku you can have my pancakes Jan said. Really? But it is your dinner Deku said. I'll just cook something else. I can go one week without pancakes Jan said. If you say so Deku said. Deku was then given three pancakes on a plate. He quickly ate them and then left the room. Thursday. Day 18. Deku entered the classroom arena. He saw Young training inside. Looks like someone is hard at work Deku said. Hey, Greeny. Didn't see you there Young said. You were probably too focused on beating up that imaginary person Deku said. It's a bit too early for shadow boxing. I was just going through some caters Young said. I see. I've done the same thing with my shoot style and now I'm doing it with my Air Force Deku said. So you here to cash in on my offer? Or look at me Young asked. The former Deku said. Then get your butt down here Young said. Deku then joined Young in the arena. We'll just be practicing our caters on each other. That alright Young asked. That's fine by me Deku said. Young and Deku then started practicing their movements and fighting styles. So what's shoot style and air force Young asked. They are the names of my fighting styles. Shoot style is the fight style I took up after switching from my arms to my legs as my primary way of attacking Deku said. Why do you change fighting styles? That's a lot of effort wasted Young said. It be honest I didn't really have a fighting style before shoot style, and life circumstances forced me to rethink how I fight Deku said. Really, is it serious Young asked. No no. Not at all. It's fine unless I'm reckless Deku said. Okay. And what's Air Force Young asked? It's part of those air bullets I fired at you during our match in Glinda's class Deku said. I see Young said. The two then continued training till the sun went down. It's gotten late. She we call it a day and head back to the dorms Deku asked. You can. I'm gonna continue training Young said. Okay. But don't stay up too late Deku said. Who are you my dad Young asked. Well when you're late to lessons, I won't hesitate to say I told you so Deku said. 
Fair point. I'll finish up in a bit Yang said. Okay. See you later Deku said. See ya Greeny Yang said. Gotta catch up to him Yang said to herself. Friday. Day 19. Cutting it a bit close aren't we the professor asked. Sorry Professor Deku said. It won't happen again Jack said. As long as you two understand. You two can go on now the professor said. Jack and Deku had cut it pretty close when it came to today's lesson, the bell had just finished going off when they arrived. Did you find your scroll in the end, Jack David asked. Yeah, it had fallen between my case and the wall Jack said. We almost knocked someone over in the dorm corridors as we rushed here Deku said. You didn't have to help me Aizuku Jack said. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't? And you would have been late if you searched alone Deku said. Why couldn't you wait until after lessons to keep looking for it though David asked. Because the headmaster told me yesterday that he would let me know about my training proposal first thing in the morning, and for him that's before students wake up Jack said. Oh. You mean David said. Yup. But let's leave it for after lessons, shall we? You shouldn't neglect aura training with a, partner Jack said. Em, true. Less talky more trainee David said. Yeah. That only works on Evelyn's lips Jack said. Then what about we go plus Ultra Deku said. Plus David said. Ultra Jack said. It's a saying that means work hard and surpass your limits Deku said. That works David said. Saturday. Day 20. Deku knocked on Team RWBY's door. Aizuku Blake said as she opened the door. Hey, Blake. Is Young still sleeping Deku asked. No. She's not her, either Blake said. Oh. I was gonna ask if she wanted to train Deku said. Did you, now? Sorry to say that Nora beat you to it Blake said. You mean that Nora is training with Young, right now Deku asked. Actually, she wanted a sparring match. You can find her and the others at the amphitheatre, if you want to go see Blake said. I guess I could. What about you, Blake Deku asked. I there's a book I've been wanting to read, and I'd like some privacy. I mean, quiet for it so I'll go to the library Blake said. I understand. I'll see you later, then. Have a good read Deku said. M. Thanks, Aizuku Blake said. Over in the amphitheater. Go, Young. Kick her butt. Don't give up, Nora Ruby cheered. Ruby, you can't cheer for the both of them Wise said. Why not Ruby asked. You just don't. And Nora isn't on your team, your sister is Wise said. But Nora has no one cheering her on Ruby said. Hey, if you want I can cheer one of the two on Deku said. Hey, Aizuku Ruby said. Good morning, Aizuku Wise said. Morning. What did I miss Deku asked. Well we is said. Home, you've gotten faster at swinging that thing around Young said. Or maybe you've eaten too many pancakes this morning Nora said. Shows what you know. I don't eat pancakes Young said. You. Don't eat pancakes Nora asked. You, no, they are fatty, unhealthy, horrible without syrup and Young said. Don't. Say it Nora said. They taste gross Young said. Take that back Nora shouted. Excessive violence. Machismo. Bad puns and Young trying to rile Nora up Wise said. So the same as usual. Go young Deku cheered. Go Nora Ruby cheered. Seems like I won't find any support in you either Aizuku. In that case. Young. You represent team RWBY, right now. Don't you dare put on an unsightly show Wise said. Heard that, Nora. Seems like I should just kick your ass already Young said. You'll pay for your offense Nora said. Oh, well. 
You really take your pancakes seriously, don't you? I was just joking Young said. You still said it Nora said. Home. What you got there Young asked. Nora then pulled something out and ate it. Did did she just stop to eat a snack in the middle of battle Deku asked. That's. That's not candy Ruby said. What Deku said. I can't. Believe this wise said. What? What are you talking about? What did she Deku asked? Oh my god it worked Nora said shaking uncontrollably. Nora did you seriously just Young asked. Nora then hit Young with a devastating blow with her hammer. Young Deku shouted in concern. Whoops. Maybe it was too big. Anyway, I win Nora said. Oh, well. Nora got her good Ruby said. I can't believe she lost Wise said. Young Deku shouted as he rushed to her. He noticed that Ruby and Wise followed at a much slower pace. Ow ow ow. I was so not expecting this Young said. Young. Are you okay Deku asked. Only my pride. I tell you, that girl's mental. Did you see what she did? She bit on a dust crystal Young said. She what Deku asked. Nora's semblance lets her absorb electricity and turn it into raw power. Of course, there aren't that many natural sources of electricity in nature. But I never thought she would try and compensate for it in such a crazy way Wise said. You're just mad because you didn't think about it first. Nora, that was so cool Ruby said. But the aftertaste is so not cool Nora said. Couldn't have you just crushed it in your hand Deku asked. That's a much better idea Nora said. But it doesn't have the same shock value, believe me Young said. Nora do you have a limit on the amount of electricity you can absorb Deku asked. I don't know. Never reached it Nora said. I see. The reason I ask is because a friend back home can produce and absorb electricity. And he has a limit, and if he goes over it his brain short circuits and he becomes stupid Deku said. Okay. I won't try that anytime soon Nora said. Not like there'll be any loss of intelligence considering what you just did Wise said. Hey Nora said. Alright, you get this round, Valkyrie. But I want a rematch. And a shower Young said. Of course you do. We'll see you directly at lunch then Wise said. Hey, my Goldilocks need long, tender and loving care Young said. Young then leaves the amphitheater. As she goes Deku could swear, she was. Okay, I'm going showery too. And since I won it's double cake in Vale today. Jung promised Nora said. What about you, Ajuku Weiss asked. Huh. Excuse me Deku asked, as he was broken from his focus on where Young left. What are you going to do for the rest of the day Ruby asked. I was going to ask Young for a match, but that plan was thrown out of the window, so I don't know Deku said. Deku ended up just heading back to the dorm rooms. Deku was walking through the halls thinking about Young. Ah. Shoot, when will the floor stop spinning a voice said. Deku stops walking as he heard the voice coming from Team RWBY's dorm room. Deku walks closer, the door isn't fully closed and Deku could hear long painful moans. Deku peeks through the door and his worried are right. Young Deku said. Deku then entered the room. Young was on the floor holding her side and putting on a smile. I Deku. What the are Young said. I knew you weren't alright Deku said. No, I'm not. See. I'm smiling. Would someone hurt smile Young asked. Yes. Because I do the same thing Deku said. Ha Young said. I've hidden my pain before with a smile. But I don't go sit in my room and just wait for the pain to end. I go see the professionals Deku said. How did you even know Young asked. You had a slight limp when you left Deku said. That's it Young said. Like I said. 
I've been in your situation before. So, I know when someone is hurt Deku said. Damn, you are observant Young said. Now Young tell me what hurts Deku said. Everything. It hurts a lot. I was careless, Nora caught me completely flat footed. Without Aura I would have lost a few ribs and the pain is a reminder Young said. Nothing appears to be broken so that's good. I'll stay here with you until it disappears Deku said. Fine. I doubt I could get you to leave anyway Young said. That's just who I am Deku said. Young then laughed. Ah, it hurts to laugh Young said. The two then spent 15 minutes sitting in silence, while Young's pain faded. How are you feeling Deku asked. The worst of it is gone and my head isn't spinning anymore. I'll be a little sore for the rest of the day, though. And no crunches for me Young said. Good. You should spend the rest of the day to rest. If you go back to training too soon, you'll just hurt yourself again. Believe me I've been there Deku said. Do tell Young said. It took me just under a year to get my body in shape. I was given a dream plan to make it happen, but I didn't stick to it. I pushed myself further than I should have. The plan was modified to fit in with my determination, but the story is that working hard all the time will make things worse for you. Now my I ask why did you act like it was no big deal Deku said. Pain is something that I had to get used to, considering my semblance Young said. Your semblance can also mangle your body Deku asked. No I have to mangle my body to use it Young said. So it's pain absorption Deku said. Not quite. It's more about how much damage is dealt to me. Suffice to say, it does me no good if I can't work through the pain Young said. I see. Then you're like Kirishima Deku said. Who's Kirishima Young asked. He's a friend from back home. His semblance allows him to harden his body into jagged rock hard skin. So his semblance is all about getting hit Deku said. You gotta introduce me one day. I like this dude already. Sure will. Your manly personalities will mesh well together. As long as you take pain more seriously. You don't want to end up with scars like mine Deku said. Yeah. I don't want scars ruining this beautiful sexy body Young said. Good. Now, are you hungry Deku asked. Yeah Young said. Then let's make some lunch Deku said. The two then entered the kitchen and made lunch. Team Jaddy were getting ready for bed, to get a good night's sleep for their training tomorrow. David was in the main room of Team Jaddy's dorm room, deep in thought. Is something on your mind? David Penny asked. Hey, Penny. Going to your checkup David asked. Yes. But you seem to be troubled Penny said. It's about. Well, let's call her a friend David said. Is something troubling her Deku asked. Kind of. Actually, I think she may be in danger David said. Oh my. Why do you think that Penny asked? Because she's scared. Terribly so David said. Then. Maybe you should ask her of what Penny suggested. Yeah, but. The thing is, I don't know if I'll get a straight answer out of her. She seems to live in her own world, do things at her own pace. That's time, she ran David said. Then you should just be there for her. Go with it at her pace. Make her feel comfortable being around you and then maybe you'll get some straight answers Deku said. True. But, hey. How do you know we're not that acquainted David asked. It was just from the way you spoke of her and a good guess Deku said. I see. Then I'll go be with her right now David said. Okay, but make sure that you're back soon. You'll need a good night's rest for tomorrow Penny said. Will do David said. David then left the room. I hope he's able to help her Penny said. I hope so too. I wish I could have gone with him Deku said. You could have though. 
so why didn't you Penny asked. David said she's scared, and introducing her to new people who she doesn't know the intentions of will most likely make her more scared Deku said. You sound like you have experience Penny said. That's because I do Deku said. Penny was about to ask about it, but decided it was better to not ask at all. A while later David returned and went to sleep. This. This is the real world a female voice asked. Deku heard the voice. He looked around but saw no one. It wasn't any of the girls as this voice was different. Deku shook his head thinking he was hearing things. He then soon went to sleep, but with that voice in the back of his mind. Sunday. Day 21. Team Jaddy had entered the Emerald Forest for some training against Grimm. So Ozpin said that we could come to the Emerald Forest to train David asked. Provided we don't cut classes for it, notify him or a teacher beforehand and keep close to the cliffs Jack said. Believe me, I have no desire to venture even further into the forest David said. What will our training regime consist of, Jack Penny asked. What do you think? We're going to skin some grim Evelyn said. So we're looking for trouble David said. Can't really fight against Grimm if we're not Deku said. Exactly. We haven't fought as a team in a while now, and Jack said, only to be cut off by a growl from the woods. My, my, aren't they impatient Jack said. Seems like the trouble has found us Deku said. Four boelves then emerge from the forest. Well, here's another small horde of boelves. Since you already fought them before, David, they will make good training Jack said. A horde. What's a horde, exactly David asked. A horde is a group of enemies that act, look and fight the same Evelyn said. This is the reason why I call Grim Vermin. They usually group up into a horde to better the odds. Though for these vermin it shouldn't really matter Jack said. Does that mean we can't weaken the horde as a whole David asked. Oh, you can. By attacking the horde you'll weaken them together, you could also attack one until you kill it. Depends on what you think is best. Attacking a single Grim will do more damage than attacking the horde Jack said. I see. Well, let 6s try it then David said. That's the spurt, David Deku said. The horde then collectively growled. Oh, put a sock in it. We're coming Jack said. They're in a hurry, aren't they Evelyn said. We'd best be careful, nonetheless Penny said. Team Jaddy then began to attack the horde. A short while later they had defeated the horde and their bodies started to disintegrate, but more boelves were around. Home, they're actually lasting longer than I thought they would. Fun Evelyn said. A boelf then snuck up behind Evelyn. Evelyn, watch out Deku shouted. Hey Evelyn said. The boelf then lunged at Evelyn. Deku quickly tackled Evelyn to the ground, but the boelf still hit them. Deku landed on top of Evelyn his face going into her chest. Ah. Uh. How Evelyn asked. Deku quickly got up, but by that time the boelf was gone. I I didn't even sense it. How Evelyn said. The boelf then came out of the forest again. Berlin. Ajuku. Get back. Your auras is almost gone Jack said. Evelyn. Ajuku David shouted. All of a sudden Evelyn's and Deku's aura was replenished too full. Evelyn then attacked the boelf and it ran away. My aura. My aura is back Evelyn asked. So is mine Deku said. Not. Not just you two Penny said. My aura cover has been refreshed as well. It's at full capacity Penny said. What David said. Yeah, mine too. But let's think about it afterwards. We still got Grim to take care of Jack said. Right David said. Affirmative Penny said. David. How the hell did you do this Evelyn asked. Team Jaddy then fought off the remaining Grim, clearing the area. Time to end this, 
Burbax Evelyn said. Evelyn then killed the last of the Grimm. And that takes care of it Evelyn said. Thank the gods David said. You Evelyn shouted getting up in David's face. W.A.H. David said. What the hell was that? How did you do that? What did you do to us Evelyn asked. Evelyn, personal space David said. Who cares about personal space Evelyn shouted. I care about personal space David shouted. Okay okay okay, time out. Evelyn, hold on to your ears, will you? I share your curiosity, but I fear just hassling David like this will serve no purpose Jack said. Sorry, you're right. Sorry, David. And thanks for the save Evelyn said. Shouldn't you be thanking Aizuku? He did get you out of the way David said. Oh yeah. Thanks, Aizuku. But oh my. Gods, David, I bet you don't have any idea what you just did Evelyn said. I mean, kind of. I refilled your aura reserves using Min. Maybe that's my semblance David said. Yes. And somehow now we can for IT too. Holy Evelyn shouted. Carrots, language. But partner, seriously. I mean, you probably don't realize why this is a big deal, do you Jack said. No David said. David. No one can borrow someone else's aura Penny said. What? But Penny, didn't you David asked. Penny shook her head. I did not give you my aura. I just used a bit of it to jumpstart your own, like throwing a fire dust crystal in a pot of water to make it boil. But living beings cannot store any aura energy that is not their own. Or at least. That was the theory. David. In the course of history, there have been more advances in research about transferring someone's aura and semblance to a different body than about storing and utilizing someone else's aura energy Penny said. You're the first person to exist who is able to do that. As far as we know, at least Jack said. And if that wasn't enough, you also somehow shared the ability with us. Even if not to the same extent Evelyn said. So I'm. What? Some kind of aura medic David asked. That would be a great name for it. If it wasn't for the fact that you can share a weaker version of your semblance with other Deku said. I'm so confused David said. Believe me, you're not the only one Evelyn said. Needless to say, this remains between us. Not a word to anyone Jack said. I concur Penny said. What do you mean? We can't tell anyone. Not even Ospin David asked. Especially Ospin. Or General Ironwood. Or any adult. We keep this a secret from everyone but this goes double for any member of the faculty Jack said. But. Why David asked. Because you will be used by them or others who would want your semblance Deku said. What David said. The headmaster, the general. Most of the adults here at Beacon, really, are people of a certain importance. It's not just the weight of a school that they carry on their shoulders Penny said. And in their mission for the greater good they don't always take the needs of the single person into account. Let's leave it at that Evelyn said. Evelyn and I both our debt to the headmaster but it wasn't without a cost. Believe me, David. You don't want to be dragged into their world Jack said. Okay, got it. Nine on the semblé David said. That's the spirit. Now, what do you say we go back Jack asked. Mua. I wanted to find and quarter the Boelf who sneak attacked me Evelyn said. I still don't get how it got the drop on you David said. Same here. I mean, I may have been playing around a bit too much but Evelyn said. Also. It was a bit too strong for a Boelf. He almost took our both of your auras in one hit. Flat-footed or not Penny said. Now, that is something we should report to Ospin Jack said. I swear to gods, if it was another imported Grim Evelyn said. 
there was also another thing about it David said. It ran away Deku said. The five then quickly made their way out of the emerald forest. Cheap or not cheap, I need that extra information, boss Howard said. I take I went badly boss said over the core. It did. But it also went well Howard said. Care to elaborate boss asked. Bad because from what I've seen of them I can't take on all four in a fair fight. I need to divide and conquer and to do that I need to know who to single out. I'll only get one chance Howard said. Reasonable. Why well, then boss asked. What if I told you I saw the blonde haired guy of the group replenish his teammates aura with his own Howard said. And here we were just about ready to leave boss said. The boss will char you alive if you do not inform him of this, boss Howard said. What an exaggeration. He would probably just take an arm or a leg. I'll send you the contact I told you about immediately. Great job. Or great luck boss said. Either way, I bring results to the table. Catch you later, boss Howard said. Howard then ended the call. This is bound to make the boss notice me. Alright. Now let's see about this contact of the boss Howard said. Howard then called up the contact. Mommy. Is that you a voice asked? Um. No Howard said. Well, thank the gods for that. A couple decades six feet under would have made for a stinker of a reunion. Now, since you're not mommy dearest and your number does not show up in my exquisitely exclusive address book, next question is. Who are you, how did you get this number and is there someone who likes you enough to pay a ransom the voice asked. Those are three questions Howard said. Starting to sound like you're not worth keeping alive, kid the voice said. Well. Where's a say you were? Something Howard said. Where's a. Where's a Van Gertie the voice asked. Where's a Van Gertie Howard said. The brat is still alive. Unbelievable the voice said. I'm one of his associates. I'm looking for something in Vale and he told me you were the person to come to Howard said. He did, huh? I don't really deal in information, kid the voice said. He mentioned that. But he also said no one's got as many eyes on the city as you. Mr. Torchwick Howard said. Flattery won't get you a discount. Let's say I have those eyes, do you have the dust to pay for them Roman asked. Dust. Not money Howard asked. Times change, kid. Got enough spare cash lying around right now, but I could be persuaded with some dust Roman said. That's. Actually better for us. I happen to have a few fire dust crystals. Just lying around Howard said. How pure Roman asked. They are mirrors of fiery death, Mr. Torchwick Howard said. End of chapter.